today will be a day of high emotion for NC State's record-smashing wide receiver, Torrey Holt. The man who owns every Wolfpack receiving mark will wear the red and white for the last time at Carter-Finley Stadium, a place where goalposts have fallen because of his exploits. Watch the scoreboard light up as Wake Forest comes to town, desperately seeking wins down the season's home stretch that could earn the Demon Deacons a long-awaited bowl berth. Two high-octane offenses meet in North Carolina's capital as NC State and Wake Forest collide next on Jefferson Pilot Sports. Toughest ticket to tailgate for in town at NC State University here in Raleigh. A homecoming crowd looking to see probably the longest fireworks display on record. Jefferson Pilot Sports presents ACC football. This afternoon, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons come calling to Carter Finley Stadium to take on the Wolfpack of NC State. Good afternoon, everybody. Steve Martin here along with Doc Walker. It's amazing. NC State boys to win their sixth game and qualify for postseason consideration. It's amazing to think that back a year ago at the same time, Coach Michael Kane didn't know whether he'd be here to enjoy this moment. No, he didn't. He was fighting for his job, but never once did he put himself ahead of the team. The theme a year ago was the rubber band. He kept his team close, united. They got victories. He kept his job, and it resulted in maybe the finest recruiting season they've had in a long time. Six true freshmen will be a factor in today's game. And 20 seniors will play their final game. One most prominent, one Mr. Torrey Holden. We had last week, Doc, against Clemson. Mr. Excitement. Those are career stats for some of us old tight ends. 225 yards of receptions. Had this, the winning score. 1,000 yards of receptions now in back-to-back -back campaigns. But I think any skill guy wants to be considered the best in his business. How about Heisman candidate? That's Torrey Holt. And about to set a single season record for receiving yards. For Wake Forest, the season hasn't gone as they'd like to. They've had a lot of injuries. Jim Caldwell, though, sees his record here in uh, November. The schedule looking promising to get some wins. But he's got to face this first game without Desmond Clark, his game break. And their go-to guy. And that is very difficult. Desmond Clark plays in a number of different positions. He's a true offensive threat. He was injured against Virginia. And that is a major blow to this offense, but they plan on getting some things done. It'll take four guys to fill the bill. Take a look at here's what happened right there, right on the knee, a sprained left knee. He's out. The responsibility now has to be carried on the offense. You said four different guys. Four guys. Well, one of those in particular is Jamie Deese, and he's outstanding, unsung, but has strength. He really does. 41 receptions on this campaign, only one touchdown. Now, he's been hampered by a pool groin. They're going to need his groin and a whole lot more today to make up the void for the loss of Clark. You know, we haven't talked about any defensive players. It could be this is the day the defense rests. When we come back, more about this matchup. Wake Forest and NC State. Stay with us. ACC football is brought to you by Pepsi, the choice of the ACC. By Jefferson Pilot Financial, complete financial planning and life insurance. We're helping you write the story of your life. By Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people. By Buick and your Lick dealers, isn't it time for a real car? By Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. And by the new money manager account from Nations Bank and Nations Bank Investments. Raise your money to the next power. Welcome back to Carter Finley Stadium, the pageantry and the fashion, if you could call it, of homecoming. As NC State takes on Wake Forest, an emotional day from a lot of aspects, especially for NC State. Let's turn it down to the sidelines and the third member of our crew, Mike Hogwood. All right, thanks a lot, Steve. And you mentioned Tory Holt a moment ago and senior day. I'm really feeling a lot of emotion down here among the parents. You see tears in people's eyes. The emotions are running higher than normal here as these seniors come to the realization that this is their final day to play here at Carter Finley Stadium and to wear this home red jersey and to play in front of friendly fans. It is an emotional day for these seniors, but now they've got to get over the emotion and start thinking about a football game. 
You can talk a little bit about Desmond Clark, the wide receiver for Wake Forest. He will be in street clothes today. He won't play. They really miss him on the field on offense. But one other place that they miss him is on special teams. Desmond Clark is an excellent holder for Matt Burdick on field goals and extra points. Taking that job today will be Jimmy Caldwell. Yep, that's the son of the Wake Forest coach. And if you think the timing might be off between Caldwell and Burdick because they haven't worked together, that's not quite true. They were high school teammates at Mount Tabor High School in Winston-Salem, where Jimmy Caldwell was the holder then for Matt Burdick. So they should be able to transition that pretty well. It is November. It's time to get busy on the football field. A lot to play for for NC State. Wake Forest trying to forget about a bad October. We got the kickoff next. Continuous rivalry in the ACC. Straight games between NC State and Wake Forest. The Wolfpack have won nine of the last ten. It is a beautiful weather day here in Raleigh. Temperature around 47 and they get up into the 50s. Last week we're in the 80s. A light wind and not a cloud in the sky on a beautiful day for ACC football. NC State won the toss, deferred to the second half. They'll kick to Wake Forest. Kent Passingham does the honors. It comes up short. And it is returned to the 38-yard line by Matt Myers. And that's where Wake Forest will start their first drive of the day as Brian Kuklick brings them out. And Kuklick, the junior, actually the senior from Hatboro, Pennsylvania, is one of the ACC's most efficient passers at 57%. 1,847 yards and will become Wake Forest's all-time leading passing leader by day's end in all likelihood. If it isn't, that's a major story. First and 10 from the 38-yard line. Wake Forest with Kuklik under center, and that itself. Kuklik to the flat, almost picked off by Lloyd Harrison, intended for Jamie Deese in the flats. Let's take a look at our Geico starting lineups. As Harrison breaks up his 14th pass of the year. That was close. Jailbreak. <laughs> Ira Williams will be the man who will have to take over for Desmond Clark in the offense. Morgan Kane, Wande Shaw, and the rest. And up front, Spire to center is a guy we're going to keep our eye on. Third team center in today, Wolverton, Flo, Satar, and Collins up front. Although right now, Doc, I see Vince Azalina in there at center, but he's running a 103-degree temperature yesterday. The pass almost picked off. This one for Marcus Chain Marvin Chambers, or Chalmers, actually, and it is nearly picked off again by Lloyd Harris. Boy, that's tough. Harrison had his hands on two footballs here. We look at the defensive lineups now for NC State. Rashad put into the lineup late, along with Bobby Cotton, Darius Bryant, and the rest. Lamar Fisher, outstanding freshman, Edward Smith, and Clayton White round out the linebacker spot. Rodney Red, the senior, will keep our eye on Scott Perry and Harrison doing the job. Third and ten for Wake Forest. The little screen out there complete. It's to Chris McCoy, and McCoy has picked up a first down at midfield. Brought down on the play by Edric Smith, the true freshman. Of Northboro, Alabama, as Jim Caldwell sees his offense move up the field. First three plays, Doc, three passes. Yeah, the key to this is, is patience. McCoy picks up his sixth reception. Now, watch it. That was real nice action by the quarterback. Key blocks up front, the young man we're talking about. As Alina gets a key block. Now, watch the way he finishes. You get to the first down. Excellent play by Chris McCoy. Running a fever, as Alina will be one to watch as the day goes along. Here comes the handoff to Keto Gary, and Gary gets nowhere. Gary will see a lot more action than Morgan Kane will here. Since Kane is suffering, suffering from a shoulder injury, he's the leading rusher for Wake Forest. So one less weapon for Brian Cooper to work with. You got Kane out, mm -hmm. and you see him on the sidelines. Canadian native, having a fine season until the shoulder stinger showed up, and then Desmond Clark in street clothes today. It really has 3.6 average. For Morgan Kane, but Gary's played a lot, so he should feel comfortable in the offense. We saw him a lot a couple weeks ago against North Carolina. Second down and nine. Wake at the NC State 49 yard line. Kuklik, short drop, the pass to Chalmers complete, but not for much, down to about the 41. And he's knocked off his feet by Lloyd Harrison, who's been very active here early on. It's a gain of about uh, seven. It'll bring up third down and two. Talk. Mike Hogwood talked about the emotion of this game in our open. I think juniors get equally emotional because they're losing friends and seniors. Now watch Chalmers. He went in and got that football the money. He's a young man who will have to take up the slack of the loss of Desmond Clark. Third down and two. Scoreless game. Wake on their first possession. 
First running play of the game, and it is going to go to Keto Gary. Actually, the second. Not much going on there, but he's got the first down at the 39-yard line. So Wake keeps their move alive, and Edric Smith comes in with the tap. Strong up front, Steve. Azulina, Wolverton, Flo, Setar. Watch it and listen. Mm. I love that. Wow, that drove Rodney Red, who's a strong safety, back. <laughs> Edric Smith finished it off, but it's first and ten for Wake. And they are at the NC State 38. Chalmers wide to the top, Deese wide to the bottom. Good for the throw. Has plenty of time in the pocket. Gets it downfield for Deese, but he's in double coverage. Red and Scott the come play in the end zone. As Kuklik had all the time in the world. Too much time. Jamie Deese might have jumped for this a little soon. Look at the offensive line. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. I mean, that's almost like 707 versus air. See the stretch? He jumped a little bit too soon. Should have ran through that. Now watch this. See when he puts the arms down, one more stride through, he might have had a touchdown. Despite the presence of two red-shirted defenders, there's Desmond Clark. Get loose. Yep. <laughs> Get some pads Get loose, on. man. Look that at adrenaline. it. That adrenaline starts to flow through your body, man. He's in the ready stance, but unfortunately he can't play today. Makes you feel like Hercules. Second down. Here's the blitz. Huff got there in time and hit him, but Kuklik got rid of the football. Well, there's some pressure. Wow, I'll say. Coach Spires and Coach Briggs up front, co coordinators for Michael Kane's Wolfpack. They had to think, hey guys, we got to find a way. If we can't get there with our front four, you got to blitz. You come around the corner, and that was some heat. Almost got there. Coming off the edge, Kuklik sees sound. That's what you want defensively. You want to disrupt his pattern, his flow. Get after it. Did Hogwood catch that? He was close. I think that question answered itself. Ninth play coming on the drive. This started at the Wake 38 yard line. They're at the NC State 38. First possession of the football game. Here's McCoy on the little screen pass. He's short of the first down, but gets down to the 32 yard line. It's going to be a gain on the play of five yards. Lloyd Harrison to get another down. Well, get a team, if you want an option and you're not running the ball effectively, the screen is the next best alternative. But you need key blocks. Azulina right out front again. Kid has a temperature of 102, but he's playing like a mad dog. So it's fourth down and four. And Matthew Burdick is on to try a fairly substantial kick. It's going to be a 50 yard kick and there's the holder Jimmy Caldwell the son of coach Jim Caldwell. This is a task as Mike Hogwood pointed out normally handled by Desmond Clark but Burdick and Caldwell were high school teammates. They did it in high school. Here's the attempt. It's going to be short by Matthew Burdick. Field goal is short. He's 30 of 43 on the season. His longest is 53 but he wasn't long enough that time. Wake Forest and NC State scoreless. We'll be back. Senior day at NC State and a very emotional day for many people, including wide receiver Tory Holt. Well, my emotions be running pretty high. Um, it was definitely be an emotional day for me, but you know I'm glad that I got this far. Uh, you know, and I'm just going to enjoy this last game, this last day with my my fellow senior senior mates, and just try to go out with, today with a bang. You think of that? Well, we'll get a chance to see it. His team takes the field offensively <laughs> here for the first time this afternoon. Uh, he's a bang specialist. Oh. Well, he was something last week. Four touchdowns against Clemson a week ago, including an 85-yarder and the game winner late with 42 seconds left. First and ten. Jamie Barnett brings him out. Barnett having himself quite a year. 2,300 yards total, or rather passing offense. And the first play from scrimmage is a running play. Ray Robinson. As we take a look at the offensive lineups, Robinson, their top running threat, 420 yards. Butler, Coleman, Holt, and Devon Smith completes the backs and receivers. And their big senior up front, Ian Rafferty, who's provided a lot of good blocks for this club. Newton, Burroughs, Rice, and Boyles up front. Again, Justin Burroughs, another senior for the pack. Second down and 11, and the loss of one. Holt is to the bottom of your screen. Ryan Hamrick, who made a couple of sensational catches a week ago to play fake for Barnett. Blitz is on. They pick it up. The pass complete to Hamrick. Hamrick in open field. Two men. Hamrick driven out at the 13 yard line by Leggy Austin. His last three receptions 
51, 42, and now 55. Cool under pressure. You mentioned Jamie Barnett. Now watch this. All over him. And he somehow gets up and throws the ball out of a pack right on the money. And you mentioned it. All this kid Hamrick has done over the past couple of games is make plays. And tough plays. That was a tough concentration catch right there. First and 10, NC State set up at the wake 13. Barnett. The option to the corner, Robinson at the 10-5. He's in, touchdown, NC State. Mike O'Kane told us yesterday, we've got to get our game to the corner with our tailback. They did just that. But he, they didn't mess around. Robinson, another one of those key freshmen. Now watch up top. 84 is going to get a big block in the edge. You just missed it right on the right side. Both guys down there chipping. Torrey Holt chipping. That is the key to success on the edge. That's his first touchdown of the season for the Hilton Head South Carolina true freshman. Came into the game with 420 yards. Dan Deskovich from Charlotte, the walk-on kicker with his 18th straight point after touchdown. He's hit 25 straight kicks. And NC State jumps on top, seven to nothing over Wake Forest. Back after these messages from your local ACC station. North Carolina State didn't waste any time. Two plays, one of 50 fucks to Ryan Hamrick, then the 13 yards for the score by Ray Robinson. That's Robbie Caldwell talking to the offensive line. Robinson capped it in the third play. 54 seconds it took him to score and go 67 yards. NC State last week, Doc had seven drives of six plays or less, and four of them were scoring drives. Now, they don't mess around. They can put points on the board in a hurry. Robbie's done a great job with his big people up front, man. They really enjoy playing for him. Assistant head coach to Mike O'Kane, and he's been here, brought here by Dick Sheridan in the Sheridan years, as is most of this staff still here. And that's the mark of really good continuity in a program when you can keep the staff all together. That's what Mike O'Kane has done. And Passingham's kick. It's going to be let out of bounds wisely by Jamie Dees because it gives Wake Forest we'll field position at the 35-yard line. So didn't take us long to get a score. <laughs> and Kuklik, 7,181. He's third in Wake Forest history, but he should be first fairly soon. In completions, he's third in touchdown passes with 40. Third is the number, but first could be the number he's looking at in fairly short order. 15 games of 250 yards plus in his career at Wake Forest. Gary and Shaw the setbacks. Deese is split wide to the top. Chalmers inside him. Rolling left, Kuplick, and the pass is complete. Brought down by Jamie Deese, and it's after the 42-yard line. Well, they really needed to have a good play on first down. In the prior possession, they had zero yards, one yard, and no yards on first down. Nice little back block by Brian Wolverton. Shot outside. That receivers to get down, find the ball, you know, bend your body to the football. And it's a tough pass for yeah. Cooper to throw because he's going against his arm. Second down, please. And off to Keto Gary, and there is a hole, and he gets the first down. 46-yard line and a flag down on the play back at the 43. But Wake Forest is going to have to run today to have success, and they feel they can. Yeah, the past couple of weeks, they've just been pretty bad. Pretty bad running the ball. Yeah, it didn't look like Bobby Cotton might have been lined up on that 13 yards, 13 carries. I mean, that's not going to cut it. And, and this is a team that really expected to run the ball a lot better. Injuries will do that to you. Morgan Kane out. But Sam up front, in the right tackle spot, they've had some problems. Well, Collins today will be starting at that part. Sam Satar, his experience, has played in this program. But they are throwing football teams, so this is what they believe in. These teams throw the football a lot. Here's Jim Caldwell. First and 10 at the 47. And now a uh, possible delay of game penalty coming up here against Wake Forest as they try to get things going. And the play clock goes out much to the chagrin of Jim Caldwell. Oh, uh. Offense, five yards. 
First down. Standing by with our Mike Hogwood on the sidelines is a man who'd love to play today, Desmond Clark. Yeah, he wish he had his shoulder pads on. We're out there. Desmond, for, how are you feeling? Feeling pretty good right now. There's a little stiffness in my leg, but other than that, there's no pain. I'm just waiting to come back. How tough is this for you sitting here watching? Um, it's tough, but I know that we've got other receivers out there who can do the job, so it's that easy to pan a little bit. Well, a two click to throw again, and uh, well, he's going to the tight end. I guess they're going to go everywhere trying to get uh, off of you. They're going to um, spread the ball around a lot today, throw it in a whole lot of different receivers, run a whole lot of different receivers in and out of the game. So I think it's a good game plan. And you look for him to put the ball in there a lot. Who do you look to step up big today, a wide receiver? Um, Jamie Deese and Ira Williams. All right, uh, that's the word from Desmond Clark. Feeling better. He told me, he says, uh, hopes to be back next week, right? Yeah. Hey, well, good news for Wake fans. He should be back in uniform next weekend. They'll need him against Florida State. There's Jamie Deese. Focus shifts to him after that pass complete to the tight end, Zelenka, for about three yards. Second and 12. Cook looked to throw, and it is complete to Ira Williams, and he's back at NC State territory. It'll be a gain of five near midfield. Coming up to make the stop, Tony Scott. Tony Scott did a great job. You can give up some things underneath, but you can't give up any yards after the catch. If you start putting your helmet right in the receiver's back, it will discourage them from the short passing game. Now watch this, see? There you get up, put a little shoulder, drive him down to the ground. Tony Scott gets set to line up. It's a third down play for Wake Forest, third and eight. They're at midfield. Kuklik with a deep drop and a good pocket. Pass knocked away by Lloyd Harrison. That's his third deflection of the day, the pass intended for Marvin Chalmers. Lloyd is on a roll. And you can sense it in cornerbacks. Once they get, they're, they're on their A game, he will break on this ball before the receiver breaks. Look at the pocket. Perfection. I mean, nobody in a red shirt close to him until Cotton at the end. And that's not good enough. And you got to complete a pass when you don't get pressure. Trip Moore getting set to kick. He's second in the ACC and punt average at about 43 a game. And Torrey Holt is back to receive the punt. Moore gets some air underneath. Air catch called for by Holt and never, never land there at the nine yard line. And that's where it'll be first and 10 for NC State after having the ball all of three plays last time around. Standings in the ACC, well, it shows you what's at stake here in November. Florida State just a game away, seemingly, from clinching their seventh ACC title, seventh straight. Three teams at five and one, but Florida State's already beaten Georgia Tech. They have Virginia this afternoon, and then Wake Forest completing their conference schedule next week. Inside the 10 is a very familiar territory for NC State. Comes a handoff to the fullback, Jeff Butler, up over the 10 yard line. 13% of their drives are started inside their own 10 yard line. So they're back there taking good care of the ball and then get about a three yard gain on first down. Helps have a fullback that you can count on. Big, strong guy that blocks with the ground. But Ray Robinson has been a great story this year. One of the six freshmen that has been a major uh, contributor to the Wolfpack program. Holt, Fushi, and Collins are in the lineup as the receiver package. Or Jamie Barnett on second down and seven. And off goes to Ray Robinson. And he busts outside the hole. Gets out to the 15-yard line. Let's take a look at Wake Forest defense here. The starting lineups defensively for the Demon Deacons. Fred Robbins, the steadiest player in there at tackle with Nathan Bowling, who makes a lot of plays, Kelvin Jones, and Matt Petz. And Nick Bender as a maniac. He's all over the field. Guys and uh, Mikovic also do a great job. Mark is one of the leaders, plays the Demon position. Jeffrey Myers. Uh, leads the team in tackles, Parrish, Austin, and Daniels also been very active this year for Coach James Bell. Third down play coming up, and the pass is incomplete for Michael Fushi. Fushi from Chapel, Carolina. Has the ball Fushi. off his hands, and it'll be fourth down. And this drive much different from the last one. Well, it was. They made a few adjustments. One, his pressure on the outside. So you get a little bit of pressure, ball thrown outside, defender right on the money, and that's good defense. You know, you just want to be in the vicinity with some impact. Jeffrey Myers there. Scott Earward getting set to punt, and this has been an area of concern for NC State this year. A low line drive kick that he just got off. They've had several blocked and given away 29 points on special teams this year 
punts, kickoff returns that have been fumbled. We've got a timeout on the field with NC State leading Wake Forest as we approach the midway point of the first quarter by a touchdown. Ray Robinson's touchdown puts NC State up by seven. Nations Bank, a corporate partner of the ACC, presents this salute to excellence question. Which ACC school was the first in league history to have three players named first team AP All-America in the same season? If you know the answer, log on to the internet address on the screen with the correct answer before next Saturday's telecast, and you'll be entered to win two tickets to the ACC Champions Bowl game. Stay tuned. We'll have an answer for you before the end of the game. Hint, hint, hint. Cook would bring the Deacons out first and 10. At the 49 yard line of NC State, excellent field position short punt. Cook would now second in Wake Forest history in passing yardage. Goes upstairs quickly for Deese. It is complete. Who has it? It's Deese complete at the one yard line. They're going to mark him down at the one, a 48 yard hookup. And that gets Brian Kuklick not only in four down territory, but watch this. Well, we talked about Jamie Dees. We put some pressure on him. He's a guy that had to come up large. Nice stop and go. At that time, is his ball slightly thrown inside. Look at the stick right on the two on his jersey. He hauls it in. And Wake Forest knocking on the door. That's a huge catch. Jamie Dees. 48 yards down to the one yard line, first and goal. Kuklick gonna push it in. It's a touchdown, it looks like. Yes, it is. Touchdown, Wake Forest. Brian Kuklick scores from the one, and the Deacons take advantage of the big play by Jamie Dees. Well, that was muscle up front. Angelina, Sam Setar, and Brian Wolverton. Talk about a wedge, boy. They created some space for their quarterback, Brian Kuklick, for the score. You didn't need to see a guy you put the pressure on. You say it's your week to come up large, and he does. He did that time. He's had a good series. Wake Forest has gone to the air quite a bit out of 14 plays. 14 of them have been passing. And the kick is good by Matthew Burdick. And we are tied up at 7 all with 6.33 left to go here in the first. Take a look at who controls the offensive line right there. Where's it going? See the thrust? See the thrust right in there? That's what we're talking about. Movement. Short yardage and goal line. You know, who can lower the pads? Jamie D said, happy, happy fella. And he ought to be. But he struggling knows. with a groin injury, close to full strength, shows you. Don't he can get it done downfield. Scoring drives are happening in a hurry. NC State took 54 seconds. Wake Forest did them 30 seconds better and scored in 26 seconds. And they have tied it up at 7 all. And Steve, we have to credit a lot of that to the defense. Had the Wolfpack trap back. It's a battle of field position. You know, you get the punt, you put your offensive position to score and they make plays. And you know, Jim Caldwell told us earlier in the week, he said, you know, we're a pretty good football team from 30 to 20. Problem is, we bogged down inside the 20. And there's one telling stat that points that out. Matthew Burdick has attempted 42 field goals coming into today's game. He's also attempted 46 point after touchdowns. It really is. That is amazing. And Jim Caldwell says, we drive the ball, we settle for a field goal. We've got to get seven. And that was a perfect example of it. Two plays, 49 yards. Teams making short time of the clock when they have the ball in field position. Well, it gets this, keeps this crowd. It's a great crowd, Danny. Puts all the folks in red in a month. Adrian Wilson, Brian Williams. Back to receive, and the kick will go out of the end zone, and it'll be taken at the 20. As Tyler Ash makes it unreturnable. And he's done that a lot lately for Wake Forest. Matter of fact, 10 of his 15 kickoffs have been out of the end zone. And of course, coming up next week, we move about uh, oh, 20 miles east of here, west of here, to Durham, where the Duke Blue Devils will take on the Maryland Terrapins. Two teams fighting the move out of the middle of the pack of the ACC, and you'll see it right here on most of these same ACC stations at 12 noon. And folks, keep up with JP Sports on the internet at jpsports.com. The only place where you can capture a picture of Mike Hogwood. Oh, yes. Standing still and not talking. First and ten, Barnett. Pressure on. The pass is too tall for Chris Cole. There was some pressure coming off the corner for Wake Forest. Well, you said it. Pressure on. And that is the key. Delon Paris, the outstanding strong safety for the Demon Deeks. 
got in his face. You've got to do that to Jamie Barnett. He's a tough guy. You know, we talk to coaches, and you ask Jimmy Kaiser, they'll tell you he's probably the toughest quarterback they've ever seen. But nobody reacts well to a Rydell under the chin. <laughs> Second down, 10. Barnett has Collins to the top side. Torrey Holt is to the bottom side. Torrey Holt yet to catch a ball here today. And Ray Robinson is going nowhere. Leading the charge, Matt Petz, but he had help from David Moore. And Doc, one thing we want, might want to look for here today, one of the things that they had speculated doing was possibly going with an extra defensive back. And, and why not? I mean, you get the double up on the pets there. See, he kept all the action inside. And I love it when you see a back that stands up and then you get the chance to top him off. David Moore had the honors there. It was taught that they might move McCulloch more into an inside linebacker position and come with a fifth back and stay with that all day long. It worked last week against Virginia. Third down coming up for State. High ball game and pressure is on and Fred Robbins will trap Jamie Barnett for the sack. He never had a shot at it. Back to the eight yard line. What a play by the junior from Pensacola, Florida with his 45th tackle. Very talented young man. And number 90, Fred Robbins. I mean, this guy comes in on the loop and you see him right there circled. He's a guy that can make plays. He's 312 pounds and see the loop inside. You see him coming in, one guy there over on the outside and 90 there squares up. Talented, talented player. Wow, Earwood almost had it blocked. Here's the return. Reggie Austin looking. He won't get it, but Wake Forest once again, Doc, is going to have field position. It is. Well, that's a rat-a-tat-tat -tat on special teams. I love great coverage teams, but you're right. Field position right now favors Wake Forest, and that's what you want. I mean, you want to be able to cut the field in half and run your offense. Started their last drive from the 49. This one will start from the 47-yard line. And there is an illustration of just where Wake Forest has started things this afternoon. Drives have started at their own 38, 35, 49, and now 47. This has stayed at their own 33, their own 8, and their own 20. Let's see what they do on first down. That's really been their nemesis, and they've not been productive on first down. They're try to run the ball. Keto Gary, and they won't get much here. Back to the original line of scrimmage. They'll move it to the 46, call 45 yard line. He's brought down by Rashi uh, Jeff Koo. NC State looking for some sort of up by their interior defensive lineman. Who uh, is being counted on today? Rashad Streets. It's going to have to do it. Uh, Kelvin Jones has played well for him, but Kelvin had hurt his forearm. We may not see him. Second down and nine at the 44 yard line. Here's Chalmers across the formation in motion. Here comes the reverse. Jamie Deese. Deese gathers some steam. Chases off Scott and it's driven out of bounds just short of the first Eight down by Rodney Red. He might have it. Well, there were moments in this play where I thought jailbreak. And, and it shows you what team speed on defense is all about. Here we watch reverse. And he fake him out. At this point, what you don't see is the red shirts that were stunned, not in position. And then all of a sudden, Tony Scott gets the Jets. And here comes Rodney Red to finish it. And it's close enough to measure for a first down. Oh. That'll out of your easy huh? chair. Here comes the measurement. It's a first down now for Wake Forest at the NC State 35 yard line. Not getting it done between the tackles, but they've run the screen well. Now they have a reverse. They just keep you off balance. Well, both teams are striving for the same thing. They both have got to get their running game to the corner. Right. They both have got to get time for their quarterback. And defensively, conversely, both teams must exert pressure, and it's not going to be with the guys who are standing in the standard four. First and ten at the 34-yard line. Zelenka in motion on the tight end side. Kukla. Sprint out to the left. Big pressure on LeVar Fisher, and it is caught by Jamie Deese at the 31-yard line. It's complete for a four-yard pass. And let's go to the sidelines. Mike Hogwood has something about Wake's center position. Well, you talked about Vince Azzalina, and uh, he's not feeling well, has no strength, went one series, and is now just trying to catch his breath. Uh, they've got number 57, Wilmot Spires, in the game at center now. So we watch for possible exchange problems here. This is the third string center. Marlon Curtis is out with a shoulder injury. Azalean is your second team. Second down and six. Well, 
Lincoln sweep and a sack. Adrian Wilson, the true freshman from High Point, North Carolina, surprises Kuklik as he turned his shoulder in the naked sweep out of the block at the 46-yard line. Well, he's a good one. I really like Adrian Wilson. 6'3", 195-pound kid runs 4'5 in the 40. He can throw that bench press up around 310, 20 pounds, a lot like you, Steve Martin. Ooh. He's enthusiastic about the game. That's what I like to see. A true freshman that steps right in and plays like an upperclassman. I'm up here crabbing because of that. Third down. Well, your arms got too big at one time. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> so my stomach. 17, Wake Forest. Tar is tied as Cooper goes upstairs. Looking downfield, has a man complete. And that is going to be number 88, Chris Modelski. Caught a couple of passes against Virginia last week from Poland, Ohio. Modelski down to the four-yard line. Well, we talked about guys that would have to step up. Whether it was Williams, Young, Stone, somebody would have to come up big for Wake. And Chris does a fine job of negotiating those sidelines. Nice little goal route. Sometimes you get caught looking too far inside, and that was Tony Scott's problem. Tony's looking at the quarterback and got a receiver that runs right by him. Big plays have been the story of the day for Wake Forest. That one covered 38 yards and sets the Demon Deacons up first and goal at the four-yard line. Hand off to Juan De Shaw, the fullback. A rare carry for him down to the three. Medelsky is a great story, but we want to take note of this. Kuklik has just passed Mike Elkins, and he is the number passer in Wake Forest history. He joins a very esteemed list of quarterbacks. Mike Elkins, Gary Schofield, and Brian Cooper has just passed them all. Well over 7,000 passing yards in his career. Second down and goal from the four-yard line. Senior from Hatboro, Pennsylvania, has battled off a lot of adversity in his career. With he's taking some hits, but he's, he's a tough guy. Here's the pitch. Keto Gary turns the corner. Touchdown, Wake Forest. Keto Gary from four yards out, and the Demon Deacons step into the lead. But you look, you look at the group now with the black hats on that seem to be really focused about this. It is tough when you go into a homecoming. Watch their flow. He's going to come around the corner. See, they got the seam. Everything is kind of boxed off. That is really well done outside. Everybody involved on trying to secure the edge. Three scores in this first quarter. Of course, now on top, 13-7. Here comes Burdick out of the hold of the coach's son, Jimmy Caldwell, with a point after touchdown. And it is good. So Wake Forest jumps up on top here by a score of 14 to 7 as we look at Keto Gary's run again. Keto Gary again, watch the guys up front. And the offensive line starts to secure and good pad placement. Now watch his eye. See, the eyes are going right to the side. He's got people downfield that are chipping for him. Key block right to your left. And there's Wolverton, who had already bumped his guy off and clean in the end zone against a very athletic defense. That's good block. See Wolverton inside 72. Then you get a key block by Wande Shaw. Boy, that's picture perfect. So the Demon Deacons trying to spoil the party here at homecoming. They are three and one in their last four ACC road games. Two and one on the road this year. Brian Kuklik now moves ahead every move. Mike Elkins down. Gary Schofield down. It's Brian Kuklik with 7,312 yards. What an achievement for this young man. Great pocket passer. And he's had some time to pass this afternoon, and I predict there'll be more oh, yards to come. Yeah, he'll have a lot more. Just think back to a couple of years ago when that man there, Jim Caldwell, had to redshirt 20 of his 23 incoming freshmen. And Brian Kuklik had to stand strong in that adversity. Took a lot of hits, but they kept going. They built a program, and uh, good things are happening, really, on both sides of the ball. It's a good story for both head coaches. It is, and they're both in their sixth year, ironically. Caldwell, as you said, he had his best team in the weight room. In the weight room, yeah. Years. Walking around campus. There's the scoring drive. That's a long one. Seven plays. It took him just under three minutes to do it. Field position. Yes, it is. Twice they've had the ball in NC State territory. That time they started the drive at the 45-yard line. Tyler Ash with the kick. This one will be in the field of play. This is Collins. Collins pops outside. And goes straight ahead after the 35-yard line. So it's a nice return of 30 yards, and it sets NC State up with their best field position of the afternoon, their own 35. It makes a world of difference. 
Let's take a look at some scores down the road. Three minutes left in the first quarter. No score at Keenan Stadium. North Carolina trying to keep their bowl hopes alive. And Michigan leading Penn State 10 0. Michigan may be the team that uh, everybody looks beyond, but they've got Ohio State left on the schedule. Notre Dame leading Boston College. Ohio State better than Oakland. And UCLA, of course, still hanging around at the top or near it. You're familiar with that school. Barnett, a little inside screen goes to Holt, and he is pushed down there by Matt Pets. But it's a nice gain of seven yards. I love Holt with the straight arm. That was sweet. That, that, was, a, was, sweet. that was a Dick Bass yeah, pull. Really nice. Now watch this. He comes down in motion, gets the ball, look for the straight arm right there. Love that. I love that. <laughs> He falls in its positive yard. On those big guys, man. He's like a fullback. There are no negative games. I feed him the ball. When the offense is struggling, I get 81 in ball. That's what they did last week. They were struggling against Clemson, and then all of a sudden, 85 yards downfield, there's Torrey Holt. Here's Raymond Robinson, and it's uh, nothing doing. Probably about two yards up to the 44-yard line, close to a first down. Mark, Mac, or rather Mark Makovic. I want to show you something. I mean, this is what talk about great college football players. Now watch this. This is on a running play. I mean, look at the intensity through the hips, hanging on right there. Maybe a little bit of holding, but the intensity is there. He's a wide receiver. You know, it's his last game here, and he doesn't take plays off, and that ought to be commended. His hands were within his body. Well, just a little bit. Yeah, no, just a third down and one. Wake Forest leading NC State. The Wolfpack with the ball. Here comes some razzle dazzle on the reverse. It's Torrey Holt. Holt has the first down. Holt has a whole lot more. One man to beat. And he's driven out of bounds at the six yard line by Reggie Austin. Forty nine yard gain for Tory Holt. Go back to the offseason, Steve. This guy used to come out here in Carter Finley and he just run plays on air. He would run 40, 50 plays. Now watch this. See, nobody's in his way there. This is all speed. Give Wake a lot of credit because to catch this guy in red, you got to have some wheels. And Reggie Austin turned it on, prevented Holt from taking advantage and going into the end zone. First and goal, however, for the Wolfpack at the Wake Forest seven yard line. And off to Robinson. Picks his way inside the five. And a nice little counter dive to the three yard line. Picked up on the tackle inside by Abdul Dice and Mark Makovic. I got to go back to what you said. Uh, here's Torrey holding you in the middle of your screen, but NC State has the banner. It says football 98, big plays, big days. And it goes with that guy, Torrey Holt. Look at the numbers. I mean, just scary. Very scary. And that's no joke. Nope. I mean, that's serious. You watch college football across this country. This kid right now is as productive as anybody on offense in America. And we are at the end of the first quarter. <laughs> and we've got three more exciting quarters to go. And no reason to expect they won't be. Wake Forest leading NC State at the end of one in Raleigh, 14 to 7. Welcome back to Wake Forest, 14 NC State, 7 in our Jefferson Pilot Sports ACC football presentation this week. Steve Martin, Doc Walker, Mike Hogwood here on a beautiful November day. Temperature in the 50s and NC State driving. They're at the Wake Forest four-yard line. We're at second down and goal. Full house backfield for the Wolfpack behind Jamie Barnett. Ray Robinson looking for his second touchdown of the day. Gets to the three. Ain't nothing happening on that one. Nathan Bowling, yeah. Well, Nathan has really stepped his game up. Yes, he has. Redshirt really freshman has. out of Swanton, Ohio, joining with Fred Robbins. Good combination on the left side of that defensive line. They've been scarred by injuries defensively. As you look at it, Mark McCulloch, they've lost both of their inside linebackers to injury. Brother, Dustin Lyman still the leading tackler. He had played a few weeks. And Kelvin Moses. Yeah, Kelvin Moses, and they still, they still. Third down and goal. Big play for the Wolfpack. Here comes Jamie Barnett. On the corner, the pass is incomplete. It's intended for Torrey Hope. He forced that one. Uh, Jamie forced that to his favorite receiver. He should have let his legs do the talking on that one. Speaking of leg, here comes Daniel See, Deskovic. Hey, you watch him come out. See, at that point now, if he tucks and runs, he gets a block by Robinson. I think he would have had a shot at threatening the cone. 
This will be a short, a short field goal attempt of 21 yards. Ryan Hamrick holding for Daniel Deskovich. He has uh, seven for seven this year. Walk-on kicker from Charlotte. There's the kick, and it is good. Everything he's kicked in hostility has worked for the young walk-on who didn't make it in the spring. Didn't make the team in the fall. Ask Coach Michael Kane if he can hang around with the team and made him promise that if I bog down the effort, you'll let me go. By the Syracuse game, he was started, and he hasn't missed a kick since. Give Coach O'Kane a thumbs up for that call. It's 14 to 10 with the kick as Wake Forest holds on to the lead. The Wolfpack scores, and let's take a look at our Duckhead first quarter stats. Just about dead even as far as total yards. Time of possession. Well, I think when you look at the average start, starting for it, that right there, 25 and 25 yard line for NC State was critical. Now both Wake Forest scores came when they started drives in NC State territory. Mm -hmm. And Brian Kukla, of course, has passed a milestone here, becoming the all-time passing leader in Wake Forest history. There are many other records at stake here today, and likely many will fall. And that scoreboard will get a workout. I like that kid. I want to do that one game. Just one game, someplace. I, I just want to do that just once. Go ahead on. We'll you know, down there at uh, Durham. But you'd have to do it too. Oh, well, wait a minute. <laughs> I got more forehead to cover, Doc. Come on. <laughs> we this company doesn't have those resources. 14-12 left to go here in the first half, and Michael Kane has seen his team drive deep but have to settle for a field goal. And they trail Wake Forest here 14 to 10. Kent Passingham getting set to kick it away. And back deep, Jamie Deese and Chris McCoy. NC State 5 and 3 coming in. A sixth win puts them in shape to get bowl consideration. Deese driven one yard deep. Comes out and is brought down, falling ahead of the 18 yard line. Brian Williams there. We have a flag on the play late. Nice little move to pick up a few more yards, but if it's against weight, he talked backed up again. Gonna feel out, feel like what the Wolfpack had to deal with. Courtney Mose getting set to make the call here. Block in the back on the return. Half the distance to the goal. First down. So this will be Wake Forest's biggest challenge of the day. Their drives have started at the 38, 35 in their own territory and in NC State territory at the 49 and the 45. This one will be set up at the Wake Forest nine yard line. First and 10. Kuklik has Shaw and Gary lined up in the eye. That's Zelenka across the formation. The pitch to Gary on the corner. And Gary gets some nice running room. Boy, that's over the 10 to the 15. That's a nice play. You run boundary side. Tight quarters there. And then this needs a back then. I give got to give him a lot of credit. That Gary, because he's got to use his eyes on this. See, from the, you see the toss, not a lot of room. See, there's your area right there. If he can scoot up in there, he's got a chance to do some good things. Now watch how quickly this thing will close. Right about there. Nice cut inside. Very nice run. Second down and four. Zelenka in motion. Tight end to the short side. They'll go short again. Gary. Cotton, Bobby oh, Cotton. Yeah. Cotton doesn't let him get back to the original line of scrimmage. Cotton ate it up. Bobby Cotton, the senior out of Windsor, Virginia, playing his last game at Carter Finley Stadium today. Just can't forget those memories. That last home game, man, you want to lay your guts on the line. And that's just, that's just great defense at the point of attack, man. He wouldn't give it up. Right over the back of linebacker Corey Lyons in pursuit. Third down. Kuklik, 9 of 14 on the day. 131 yards. Looking at a big third down with his team holding a four point lead. Three man rush for NC State. Pass complete to Ira Williams at the 19. Driven back to the 10, but the forward progress will be near the 20 yard line and could be good enough for the first down. Well, That's a good job by Ira. Young man, a red shirt freshman, Montclair, New Jersey, comes in. How often have we watched receivers run it short? He gets a necessary yard. Watch the hands. See, real nice catch. 
sucks the ball in. You know, and you move the chains. And all of this is without Desmond Clark in the lineup. Guys stepping up. Nice block to again by Keto Garrett in the backfield. Good operation. First and ten at the 20. Five step drop for Kuklik and the gun. Knocked away. Box intended for the tight end Zelenka. Great coverage by the linebacker. Yeah, see, this is one time here where Brian Kuklik made up his mind where he was going to go with the ball. He, you should let the defense dictate where you're going with the ball. He has he has McCoy out in the flat. See inside there, that's tough. That's tough. That young man is covered. So you want to look outside. This natural progression would have taken him to Chris McCoy. Fifth year senior out of Tucker, Georgia. And that's going to be second down and 10 back at the 20 yard line. One lone setback, three wide receivers in the set for Brian Kukla. And now he wants a timeout. Kluke looked to talk things over, wants to bring Medelsky in to talk with him. And we'll take a break as well. 12.08 left to go here in the first half. And it's Wake Forest 14, NC State 10. We're in the state capital of the Old North State, and you're looking at the Capitol building in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina, which to many amazement is still standing after Election Day. Wake Forest 14, NC State 10. These two Tar Heel State schools going at it. 12.08 left to go in the second quarter. Steve Martin, Doc Walker, and uh, County Commissioner Mike Hogwood. Commissioner Hogwood. <laughs> Reminding the campaign. Second down and 10 now for Wake at their own 20. Bobby Cotton in pursuit of Brian Cooper, and he lets it go incomplete. It's intended on the wing there for William Merritt. Merritt, one of the many receivers who will have to take the place of Desmond Clark. Reggie Austin covering on the play. Everything changes when you're under pursuit. When you have people after the quarterback, that is the key. Speed up his operation. Now watch this. See, right at the end, that, that didn't, that's just the fact that Corey Lyons flashed. Wake Forest is four of six on third down. They're facing third and ten at their own 20. Field position game switching over to NC State here, it seems. Kuklik on the quick screen slant to Ira Williams, going nowhere. Not happening. Sheldon Key is there, Rashad Streets also in on the tackle for NC State. Coach Snipes talked to us about this yesterday in our meeting. He said, you know, they got that full screen to the wide receiver, and even without Clark, I think they're going to run it. They did a pretty good job of getting the edges down, but watch the pursuit. It's the inside. Picture perfect, folks. You get four or five of those red shirts at, at the point of attack, you're going to win. Great article on that play in the, in the Raleigh News and Observer this morning by Sherrod Bitt. Lately, here is the punt, and it's picked up by Corey Holt, and watch him go. Holt gets a block from Harrison. Holt going downfield, but we have a flag. A flag back at the foot as Holt sails into the end zone. There are two flags, in fact. One back where he fielded the punt at the 45, and then yet another upfield at the 45 of Wake Forest. Flag or no flag? This is college football's version of primetime Deion Sanders. I mean, when he gets the ball, you just think he could go the distance. Average is 17 a kick. You it's only scary. ask the guy to get yeah. eight. Yeah. Just and catch he, it. And he's returned one for a touchdown this year against Florida State. But here's Courtney Mazze with the call. We have a halo violation on the kicking team. We have a block in the back on the return team. The penalty is canceled. We'll re-kick. Fourth down. So we get a chance to look at Torrey Holt again. Like that. There you go. Watch him. Let's see who can we see if we can find him. Not in our, not in our view, but let's watch 81 do his thing. That's just too easy. I mean, that's how it's a hit him. So they'll kick again from the 21-yard line. And this is Trip Moore, second-best punter in the ACC. He was under a lot of pressure last time. They didn't lay a hand on him, let alone tackle him. Nobody touched him. Now there's an official's timeout to talk about the placement of the football here offsetting penalties you go right from the 21. It's amazing both units have to do it again but I think it's harder on the coverage team than the return team. Oh yeah you think Torrey Holt doesn't want to do this again he says I'll do it better next time warmed up and the key to that is the release guys going down they get a chance to get hammered oftentimes doubled and I don't know if we're going to have this or are we out of time. Correction no. and ruling. 
the halo violation against the kicking team has been declined. The block in the back on the receiving team will be aired. first down this way. All right, so. Okay. The penalty against Wake declined, the one taken by NC State, gives them the ball at their own 48 yard line. They close in, I mean, the ball was tipped. He gave us the indication that the ball was tipped. Okay, there we go. Happened right there. Had to be Rodney Red. Rodney Red might have been, and you know what? If he doesn't get him at that point, maybe that young man makes a tackle. It was so close. Well, instead, NC State will take it over on their own 48 yard line. Still not bad field position, but it's not six points. Jamie Barnett has three wide receivers to the wide side. Now Coleman comes to the short. Rolling to the wide is Barnett, and he overthrows Torrey Holt. David Moore in field coverage. Let's go to the sidelines. Mike Hogwood standing by. You'll notice that the Wolfpack are dressed all in red to the first time this year they've done that. The last time they did it, it's reserved only for big games. The last time they did it was last year in the game against East Carolina. Midweek, senior Torrey Holt got all the other seniors together. They decided this is what they wanted to do to signify how special this game was today. They went to Coach O'Kane. He said, go for it. They're all in red. He's a huge big game. For NC State, it's certainly is. Well, I'm just saying, you know, our producer, Scott Snyder, is a proud graduate of ECU, and any time we can take a shot at it, we do. <laughs> and his knees reflect that. First and five, <laughs> it's a penalty for Wake Forest. Barnett in the grasp goes down, and we have another penalty flag. And it's in the backfield of NC State that stops play. We didn't get a call as to what that penalty was. It's an offsides penalty against Wake that set up the first and five. Let's see what this call is going to be. So a rash of flags have spoiled an otherwise well played game to this point. Well, when you over, when you celebrate and then you don't get it, it takes kids a long time to, to get refocused. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, spot of the foul, repeat first down. So it's from the spot of the foul that, in essence, is a 15 yard penalty because it'll take them back to the 39 yard line of NC State. Dula Geis was in uh, middle linebacker for the Demon Deacons. He was in, might have been the guy that received the holding penalty. It's momentum. We've seen how often we see the guy celebrate, all oh, you call it back. Now you got to rechannel all of that emotion. And a lot of times kids don't get it done. Now NC State has to do it right now to reestablish the field position they've been blessed with. Barnett, three wide receivers to the wide it's side yours. of the field. The pass is incomplete. Intended there for Chris Coleman. I like to play when you motion and you hope that the guy trailing the motion man gets behind him just a yard or so. Then you run him out and, you, and usually you can win. Now watch this. He went in and he comes back out and we'll see. See you got space. You got a lot of room right there. So you got a lot of got a lot of room in there. But he didn't catch it. Barnett two for six 62 yards. Brings up second down and 19. Harold Jackson is now the fullback for NC State. Ray Robinson the tailback. Play action, big blitz is on. And the tackle made by Brian Ray. The sophomore from Wheaton, Maryland comes in and gets his second sack of the season. That could be freshmanitis on this one. Ray Robinson watching five right here. Let's see what he does. He runs right by him. Now maybe that was his assignment, but Dick Porte, his uh, running back coach, made with that. And a lot of times, the toughest thing about making the transition from high school to, to uh, college is blitz pickup. That's right. Protections. Pass receiving there and pass go. block. There you go. Who do I get? Third down and a mile and a half. Make it 26 officially. NC State backed up to their own 32. Barnett again. Big rush on, pass complete, Ryan Hamrick. Boy, he was close. Almost made it up. Almost got up to the first down. He's into Wake Forest territory at the 47-yard line. So it's a 21-yard pass hookup. Making plays. Watch the rifle man on this one. Just kind of slings it in. Nice shot, right on the money. And the tackle is enough to get it down. Good body block by Parrish. Well, Hamrick's a hot receiver, isn't he? He is, smoking. 
Out of 55 yarder earlier. Yearwood gets the punt away on fourth and six. And it's fumbled. It's fumbled. And it's loose. NC State has it. Touchdown, NC State. I think it's red. Red might have made up for that penalty that hit, hit behind the back on the punt return by Torrey Hall. Talk about redemption. Rodney Red comes out of there with it. Ironically enough, the kicking game, which has given NC State fits this year, rewards them with a touchdown. Boy, nothing beats being active on coverage teams. Austin couldn't get the handle on the football. And now NC State will kick the point after. Hamrick to hold. Deskovitz. Getting set to kick it. As the Wolfpack now jump on top, 16-14. Fireworks go up, and the Wolfpack back out in front. What else is new? NC State recovers a punt in the end zone. It is Rodney Red getting it done after the kick by Scott Irwood. Austin can't come up with it, and the adventure begins. We'll return. Wolfpack special teams getting it done as they step in front of Wake Forest, 17-14. Reggie Austin on the return. Ball goes right off his hands, his elbow. And he uh, puts his team in a horrible position. Now it's just a scramble for the ball. There's some kids standing around watching. Boy, I give number two Lloyd Harrison a lot of credit because he went after that time Austin. Now watch this. The ball gets loose. Now you'll see number two get in your screen right there. See, that's key because you keep him away, not a scramble. And see, the rest of these guys in the white shirts got to get over there and try to go. And Lloyd Harrison did the job on Austin. Rodney Red did the job recovering the ball. Hey, fans, hungry? Well, now's a good time to call Domino's. Domino's delivering a million smiles a day. Just think, call now could be ready for you by the end of halftime. Be ready to enjoy the second half. Deliver up here, we've had one million five. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Chris McCoy. And he goes up through the middle. Eric Leak is the one who brought him down. Brought down to the 32. And we have a late flag going into the play. It was a massive collision. Boy, if this against Wake, Coach Caulfield, he's going to have a look of him on his face like, you got to be kidding me. Well, this is the second straight time that they've received a penalty after receiving a kickoff. And of course, it determines field position. First down. Well, that look is now switched <laughs> to red. And Coach Mike O'Kane. Mike O'Kane getting the number from somebody. The Wolfpack came in here, the least penalized team in the ACC. Well, he gets it. He understands. Man, we just got a big play on emotion. The last thing you want to do is let a team with this offensive ability get more space. Clear run, untouched. Watch the collision. Real nice contact. Must be leaks involved in that. Wake Forest at their own 44. Play action for Kuklik and plenty of time. Going downtown for Jamie Deese. Broken up by Lloyd Hamilton. No, Deese picked it up, but it was on the ground. Are they going to call it complete? They don't say caught that one. NC State all around the officials saying the ball hit the ground. Deese is saying that he caught it. This will prompt a discussion as they all come together and talk about it at the 13 yard line. Got to sell it now. See, sell it. There you go. A little more animation on that, Jamie. You got to really sell it. And don't let go of the ball. Never give the ball back. No, don't Never. give the ball back till you get the answer you want. You hold on to that ball. You got to sell this too, coach. You got to get into it. Because right now there's enough doubt to where you can swing that boat. Courtney Mazze has a committee meeting going down yeah. there at the 13 yard line. A huge decision incomplete. <laughs> Let's have two looks at this one. Now the guys in stripes have a tough job because they don't get this extra look. We do. Ball is tipped. Now watch it. There the ball comes down. And at this point lands right on his lap. Can you believe that? Wow. The ball landed right in his lap. There we go. Better shot at it. Give our camera guys a high five. Ball goes right there on his belly. Oh my you goodness. Kidding me? Right on his belly. Look at that. That ball is his. Uh oh. Big break. Well, one of the, I mean, 
the possibilities of that ball landing where it did because he was nowhere close to catching that when he hit the ground. No doubt about it. Wow. Kukla comes out of the pocket up to the 48 yard line. And I'll tell you what, that's a call I don't think anybody no, could make it we without. Had, yeah, we had a replay. Yeah, we got a replay. We can see it, but. If Indianapolis had this a few years back in Pittsburgh, Jim Harbaugh's throw at the end of the game and the Colts would have been in the Super Bowl. They would have made it to a Super Bowl. Now watch this. D stumbles back. Red both guys miss. Ball tipped. Now watch it. Right there on his belly. He doesn't, he doesn't even know he has it. He's looking away it. from it. He pulls his right hands there. to his body and then look at it. There's the ball. That's amazing. Third down and seven. Kuklik to throw the pass complete. And that's the Myro Williams and he tackled after a three yard gain at midfield. Jason Perry. Fifth year senior from Passaic New Jersey. One of the co-leaders in the ACC in interceptions with four and that forces the punt. But Wake Forest left to ponder what could have been. Man, I, you know you wait now. OK so in your mind you got robbed. But you got to forget about it. That's right. You know, you got to forget about it. You got to, but you got to sit there and say, man, we should be in our goal line offense yeah. right now. <laughs> what a shoulda, coulda. <laughs> so. Instead, Trip Moore is away to punt. Torrey Holt back at his 12 yard line. Almost, well, almost got it. You're right. Holt will get away from it. Now it's going to be an uh, excellent Wake Forest roll to the six yard line. Well, well, well. NC State holding on to their lead. Team 14 by the length of Jamie Deese's shirt. A 43-yard punt. 31 points on the board so far. Reminds us of last week. We had 30 in the fourth quarter when NC State went to Clemson. Brandon Streeter got it going. 14 yards to Mal Lawyer. That cut NC State's lead to 28-24. Barnett comes right back with Torrey Holt. That gives the Wolfpack a 35-24 lead. After Clemson took the lead, Dan Deskovich, 32-yard field goal, put the pack back on top with under six to play by two. David Richardson comes down and answers with a 40-yarder. The Tigers up in the final two minutes of play, 39-38. But guess who has the last say? Jamie Barnett, 42 seconds left to go. Torrey Holt for the six. And NC State for the 46-39 win. Steve Martin, Doc Walker, Mike Hogwood here in Raleigh, and we are in the second quarter here. 7-11 left to play. 17-14. You had to rub that in, didn't you? Well, yeah, I wasn't going to say that you weren't there, but I will now. Jamie Barnett back into his own end zone. Rushes on by McCullough. The pass is incomplete, intended for Tory Holt. A pass that he normally catches. Damian Daniel in cover. What a throw on the run. You're right. That's so rare. For us to see that combination not hook up successfully. Daring play from your own six. I love it. I love the style. You backed up, you can create some big plays. And here we watch the playmaker. See, I love the way he reestablishes the stem. That gets him a little space. At this point, see the separation he gets? Yep, and off his finger. We don't see it. It's a rare look at Tory Holt. Second down and 10 now. There's Holt, Gibsonville, North Carolina senior. Coming on the show on his last day. McCove set the blitz. Here's the handoff to Robinson. And Robinson gets a little bit of running room out to the 10 yard line. Stay tuned at halftime for our Bell South. You call the play feature. To look at a big call from ACC games past. Third and six. It's Clinton Wilburn. It was nice. Clinton knocked the shoe off and threw it about five yards. <laughs> That's smart. Get him out of there. You hope you get the guy out. <laughs> <Clinton. laughs> smart play. So that shoe's not going to be comfortable now. No. Running back has got to have his shoes on. They got to be on tight. You know that sock will bunch yeah. up. You See, know how that so is. So he's right now mentally he's fried. Yeah. He cannot function right now. A running back is like a receiver with a bad glove. See, it won't work. And now they got to call timeout for him. You know what I mean? Yep. It's impossible. It cannot work. Whereas for a lineman, no problem. You know, <laughs> you don't need your shoe. Fans, equipment problems for Ray Robinson. If you call timeout for a guy, he's got to come out for a play, doesn't he? Should have left the field immediately. Anyway, when a guy throws your shoe back 10 yards. Let's take a look at some of the scores around the ACC second quarter. 25 miles away. Maryland was up top first, then North Carolina came back to tie. 
Arkansas, a surprise team in the SEC, leading yeah. Ole Miss seven nothing. A lot of people think Ole Miss will get them today. BC and Notre Dame. They've had some good ones, haven't they? Boy, two Roman Catholic colleges going at it. Michigan over Penn State, ten nothing. On the defense, Wolverines. And let's get down to the field of Mike Hogwood. Mike O'Kane was really upset about that. A, fr a true freshman mistake was all that was. He told Ray Robinson, anytime your shoot comes off, you got to just come out of the game. It can't cost us out. And uh, so he's now got to play with Jamie Barnett. Robinson's got the shoe on. You were right. He couldn't have played. No. Uh, that, shoe, that shoe was down, bunched around his foot. It wasn't even on his foot. No skill guy can do that. And give Clinton Wilburn a lot of credit because he tossed that thing 10 yards downfield. <laughs> that, that only caused it. Now he had to put it on. He had to go, per he had to go, go get, get it. pursuit. All right, third down, six to go. Ball at the 10. In the shotgun, Barnett. Torrey Holt to the short side of the field. Barnett looking that way. He comes across and catches it at the 21 yard line. It's going to be good for the first down. Gain of 11 on the play. DeLon Parrish and Jeffrey Myers finish him off. Every time he touches the football, he deserves an awesome baby. I mean, at that time, he was able to run a defender off. Damon Daniel actually runs into his own own guy in the backfield. Now watch the press. See, he gets picked. That's the benefit of a route. Bring your guy across, create havoc. Now watch him finish. Second reception of the day. First and ten at the 22-yard line. Here's Barnett on the option, pitching behind him to Robinson, but the pursuit catches up. He pitch out to Robinson, and he loses. And finishes off Ray Robinson at the 21-yard line. No gain. Damian Daniel is there. David Moore is there. Jeffrey Myers is there. Boy, Mike. And also, Harbo. Michael Kane had to lose a heartbeat on this one. Boy, Lance Stewart, nice camera work, kid. That's nice. I love that. Right in your face. And give a call to Ed Cargbo or Kogi from Stafford, Texas, a true freshman. I might have left a syllable out. We've seen Okogi. He's made some plays. Yes, he has. Second down and 11. Barnett. A little inside slam and a lead to Fushi, his tight end at the 22. Gain of a yard. Strong safety, Jeffrey Myers on the tackle. Fushi's second reception on the season. And Myers, who had 21 tackles over the last two weeks, including 11 against Virginia. Yeah, like with Jeff. Senior out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Need to from the free safety spot. You know that he can come up with that amount of tackles and a sure tackle. Holt matched up with Austin to the top of your screen, the very top. Back to throw, Barnett. Steps up, fires incomplete. This one's intended for Coleman coming across, and again, Damian Daniel is in on the tackle. So it brings up fourth down. The punting unit is on, and Scott Earwood will be back. Well, when you have an incompletion on a square out and nice hands yeah. on the center stage, you would like it to be because you have pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, clear throwing lanes. I mean, that, as a coach, man, you get frustrated because everything was there but the throwing. Jeskovitz. Although they're up here with the kick, we have a penalty flag around the punter. NC State will down it at the Wake Forest 41, but they may, get, they may be getting the ball back. Not for the first. Well, let's see if it's running into or if it's a blatant 15 yarder. 35 yard punt. If it's a five yarder, they'll kick it over again because they were fourth and nine. So, personal foul, roughing the kicker, 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. Courtney Mazze brings the Wolfpack Red up on its feet with the call against Wake Forest, roughing the kicker, and it gives new life to the NC State offense. More special team woes for Wake. See the kick? You have to protect these guys. And that time, you know, you blocked into it inadvertently, but the bottom is that you jeopardize the safety of a kicker. Who was also a good actor. Well, of course. That's part of being a good kicker. <laughs> First and ten from the 39-yard line now. The drive stays alive. The toss now comes to the corner. And Robinson, there's a flag down on the play. He's brought down by David Moore. But we'll see what the flag is going to be at the 37-yard line. That was a good fake. Didn't fake wake out. Got me. Chop block against NC State. 
So the game is slowed down in its pace at least from a scoring standpoint here in the second quarter. Three point NC State lead and Courtney Mazze to tell the multitudes what this call is going to be. Crack back below the waist on the offense 15 yards spot of the foul repeat first down. Man, they call it boy it's a great one it saves kids it saves knees and it's brutal see top of the screen right there that's exactly where it happened and it's a good call and it looked like Coleman might have been involved on that and Delon Parrish the strong safety for Wade got to save now there are the penalties Wolfpack average five a game they're at five and we're still in the first half Demon Deacons four for 34 yards this one backs the Wolfpack into a first and 26 at their own 22. Lead the ACC in the fewest penalties, but they're racking some up today. And flat pass goes to Coleman, and it is complete, but not for much. Very well done. Damian Daniel, the senior out of Ellenboro, North Carolina, with the tackle. You, know, you see plays that teams run against your defense that your offense runs in practice. And those are the plays you jump all over. And because Wake Forest throws it so well, they see that play a lot. Which Michael Kane, I think he feels what you feel, Steve, that this team game is slowed down, and that's to his disadvantage. Second down, 25. Play action for Barnett, but this is Bowling to slow him up. Pets to finish him off. And Kogbora Corgi is in there on the tackle as well. That's the third sack of the day for Wake Forest. And a great coverage in the secondary, too. That was, that was a great defensive stand. Following a disappointment on the roughing call, your defense was thrown back on the field, and they were nasty. I mean, they got after him with a pass rush. AC Bowling, our guy, maniac, and then downfield, which you didn't get a chance to see, was great one-on-one. -on -one. Well, you will see it now. See the post corner? Took it away. Nice way to come out of the twirl. Very nice work. Good job in the truck. That's great. They got it on both sides. Back deep. third and 32. Here comes the quarterback draw. It's Barnett. And Barnett gets a little bit of room for his punter out to the 25-yard line. Punting unit comes on. And so Wake Forest defense, aided by penalties and the third sack of the game, holds NC State. And look at this. North Carolina steps in front, 14-7. All opportunities for North Carolina are still there, but they've got to run the table. That means uh, season-ending finale with NC State down in Charlotte. Charlotte Ooh, boy, that ought to be a lot of fun. A lot of red and blue in that one. Let's go to the sidelines for a preview of halftime. Mike Hogwood. Thanks, Steve. And coming up at halftime, we're going to get comments from both coaches from Wake Forest, Jim Caldwell, Michael Kane from NC State. Also, our regular features like our Buick player. We'll look at the uh, statistics in the ACC and our best of the ACC. Also have our Domino's hot play. All that coming up in just a couple of minutes at halftime. But Wake calling timeout here with 224 left. Uh, they want to put some more points on the board before uh, this half is over with Steve. They have one timeout remaining with 224 left to play. NC State's offense has not done much in the second quarter even though they do have a score it came off their punt team which is out on the field right now Scott Earwood in punt formation Reggie Austin is back in punt formation for Wake Forest even Deacon's hoping for some good field position he ran into the kicker last time oh boy Earwood who's been hurt most of the year didn't look hurt there what a kick by Earwood it goes back to the Wake Forest 12 yard line Bigfoot, 63 yards, Scott Earwood, and that is his longest ever. Special teams coming through, and Earwood does the job. 2.13 left to play, NC State 17, Wake Forest 14. NC State get on the board first from Raymond Robinson. Ray Robinson, a 13-yard run. Kuklik tied it at seven. Keto Gary. Four yard run to make it 14 7. Deskovitz a kick and then Rodney Red recovers a fumble punt in the end zone. Here is Cooper rolling left with the right hand and firing. It is complete to Jamie Deese and it's good for the first down out at the 25 yard line. It stops the clock with 2.07 left to play. 
They got it done well on this. They secured the edge. Three guys involved in this. Wilmington at the edge. There you see Tito Gary. He'll come out. He gets the cut block. And see, he squares up. He's able to square those shoulders up, running to his left. Good throw and catch. First and 10, ball at the 20. The Deacons, after yeah. they, they were one yard on their three first downs, yeah. they've improved that considerably. Lots of time for Cooklet. Little flare off over the middle to Chris McCoy. And McCoy, smart piece of run. Yep, gets enough yardage and gets out of bounds on another first down at the 41 yard line. William Pinnell on the tackle. Smart piece of running. These are the things that you, as you play the game longer, little things that you just start to get as a player. It makes you a player. When you're conscious of clock, down and distance, that's heads up. 19 yard gain for Chris McCoy. Clock shows two minutes. Lake Forest has moved a sizable amount of real estate here, almost 30 yards and two plays. Cooklet rushes on, gets it away, and it is incomplete. Intended there for Merritt, or actually uh, Chris Medelsky. Medelsky. Wake Forest, their offense is designed for two minutes. I mean, this is what they do. But you can't get impatient with this. You take your passes where they are. Don't try to force a long one. And a lot of times you can get one. North Carolina State leading Wake. We're under two to play. Wake Forest with the football at their own 41. Second down and 10. Chalmers split out wide. Deese on his inside shoulder. Now in motion. Cooper back to throw. It is too tall. Harrison in the area. Chalmers, the need nearest Everybody's Wake Forest pass. receiver in the area. That yes. brings up third down. You get two plays. You open up. You have a, a, a sprint out. You pick up to Deesh. You pick up 12 or so. Then you get the drop down to the back. You pick up 19. Then you force one deep. And then you get out of rhythm. Out of rhythm. And that's something that uh, has really been a problem for this offense. Take what's there. Hooklet, the best percentage in the ACC, continuing on that story today. 14 of 24, as you saw. Back to throw, three steps, and it's complete. But not much there. To John Stone. Not good enough for the first down. Marcel Huff, the nickel back in there for the tackle for NC State, and we'll see the punting unit for Wake Forest. Stone's another one of those guys that had to fill in for Desmond Clark, one of the four players we talked about in the open. But if there was ever a series where they missed to Desmond Clark, I think you'd agree that was the first time it really was glaring that they needed a guy they could count on. So a timeout called by NC State next Saturday will be in Durham as the Blue Devils take on the Maryland Terrapins. The Terps hope to have some more big def defensive plays like that like they had with Peter Timmons last week against Georgia Tech. The Duke offense prospering with Bobby Campbell at the helm. It's the Terps and the Devils at noon. Lots of fireworks, not what expected from Wallace Wheaton. You'll see it on many of these same ACC stations from Jefferson Pilot Sports. Well, they're bundled up here in Raleigh. And here's the kick line. That looks like our production meeting last night. Yeah, it does. It really does. We kind of do that to but promote which one, camaraderie. Which one is Dave Bruchette? Would it be? I, you know what? Which, I think, it, well, let's see. That guy right there. That would be Bichette. <laughs> right? And that like would that. be Scott Snyder, our producer. <laughs> Scott's great for disguises. <laughs> Fourth down coming up for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Third down, good. Trip Moore is set to go. He's the kicker from the state of South Carolina. He was almost blocked. Boy, it's, it's exciting when they go back in punt formation. It goes out of bounds, however. Short kick. And that'll be NC State's turn to put on their two-minute drill, but they got to reduce it to 97 seconds here. They have one timeout remaining with a minute 37 left to play. A 25-yard kick by Trip Moore. And there's the <laughs> well guess where their offense is going today. <laughs> this is the one you got to be concerned about right yep. there. They wanted to, they, they wanted balance coming in yeah, 13 yards on 13 rushes coming in and now uh, a lot of that is continued. But they're only three points back. Yeah. Barnett special play killed him on that. It's DBL. 
Jamie Barnett to Chris Coleman complete at midfield. It's a 20 yard hookup. David Moore. Have a shoe problem. Yep. And look, the difference between a junior and a true freshman, Hamrick goes to the sideline. Ricky Collins takes his spot. Coleman and Holt complete the receiver personnel package this time. First and ten at midfield. Barnett on the corner got a nice block. The pass complete to Coleman, and it's good for a first down at the Wake Forest 39. Gain of 11. David Moore on the stop. Well, if David had a look back at the ball, he might have had an interception. Now you see the big boys that convey up front. That's nice. Now watch the throw. Now see, David doesn't look. If David Moore turns to the ball, he might have had an interception. But Chris Coleman has a completion instead, and it's first and ten at the 39-yard line. There's David Moore. Seeing a lot of action today out of Smithfield, North Carolina. He's a junior. Barnett out of the shotgun, back to throw. Steps up, fires complete to hold from there. Nice tackle made by Abdul Geis from Rockledge, Florida. He's a junior playing out of the middle linebacker spot. Nathan Bowling all over him. The average quarterback there is an average QB sacked. That's funny. We talked to James Bell yesterday. We talked about Bowling. He said, well, he's missed a couple of sacks. So they're putting a high standard for him. And there's the inside slant to Holt. It is complete. It's close to a first down at the 30 yard line, but it's going to be just short. Delon Parrish in on the tackle. 39 seconds left on the clock, and the clock is moving. Third down and one. State with a timeout, and they'll take their final. They want to get in and kill the ball. But uh, they didn't get a chance to because the play clock was rolling down and they had to take the penalty. Michael Kane gathers with his quarterback, Jamie Barnett, young man out of Roxborough, North Carolina, who's still a junior in terms of eligibility and is the number 11 in ACC history in passing yards. And if he plays another year, which he likely will, and he has a stand oh boy. stands a chance to pass uh, Ben Bennett in that category. He averaged about 295 a game. Longest rivalries around the country, and this one is fifth right now, but it's going to step up to fourth. But that one at the top of the list is going to drop out. Kansas and Oklahoma won't play this year, so that breaks up the streak of 95, and they've gone 88 straight times. Wake Forest and NC State, the longest in the ACC among ACC schools as you saw Clemson in South Carolina just above them. there's James Bell in the middle of the defensive huddle yeah, there's James right there and uh, Wake Forest now looking to defend on third down and one with 31 seconds left to play and a great first half here between these two NC State up seven nothing Ray Robinson 13 yard run then Brian Kuklik tied it with a run of his own four minutes later Keto Gary put Wake Forest on top of the four yard run with two minutes left in the first quarter it was 14 7 Deskovitz with a 30 yard 20 yard kick make it 14 10 Wake and then State took the lead recovering a fumbled punt in the end zone by Rodney Ray and that's where we are right now and Jamie Barnett calls his own number goes straight ahead and gets the first down it's going to be close enough for the first down will they measure or they just move the chains. Either way, it stops the clock momentarily, and it's going to be close enough to measure the ball. So that's a break for NC State. Yeah, you want to get that measurement. Yeah, they didn't have to take him down the ball, which would have used up a play. Well, it forced him into the kick, but I think they still believe that they can get a shot at the end zone. You got a little bit of a breeze over the top of the stadium, but uh, our Mike Hogwood revealed that that's not a factor on the floor, and it is a first down. So NC State has it. They're still a little bit out of field goal range here. Out of the shotgun. Going upstairs for Holt. Knocked out of his hands by Reggie Austin. I'm not sure he knew he did it. He did. <laughs> but he had instinct, man. I mean, we talk about receivers and go for the football, and D-backs have got to locate the ball. You're going up against, again, a Heisman candidate. This is a large order for the junior, Reggie Austin. Now, let's watch it. See, at this point, he figures, okay, they're coming at me. Does he locate the ball? Yeah, at the end, he does. But it, and then backhand, when he 
the second effort really by Reggie Austin denied a touchdown. But he saw it just in time. It looked like he was going to be a spectator there. Good play, Reggie. Big blow. Barnett unloads again. This one picked off by Austin in the end zone. Intended for Holt. It was almost like the same play. But the pressure by Wake Forest, the key, as Barnett was hidden between the shoulders as he threw. Well, collective effort defensively. And that man, number nine, Reggie Austin, deserves a high five. One on one against Torrey Holden. And the kid showed no fear. But the key, the big fellas up front. Nice move inside. I mean, that's what happens on that one. Kelvin Jones, he provided the pressure, forced the INT. And for Reggie Austin, the satisfaction of one, intercepting the pass, and two, knowing that he won't have to face Torrey Holt for another 25 minutes. That's a good thing. <laughs> Kukla takes a knee, and this first half will come to an end. Even though Wake Forest has a timeout left, they uh, are not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. They're going to go in and collect things up at halftime. An exciting AC counter between two old tobacco roll rivals, and Mike Hogwood is standing by with NC State coach Mike O'Kane. Oh, you're right, Steve. Tobacco road rivalry, they all seem to be like this, huh, Mike? Every game's tough in this conference. Uh, everybody's equally matched, and uh, if you don't play well, uh, you're not going to win. And, uh, you know, we've got to play better than we did that first half. Specifically, what do you have to do better in the second half? We've got to protect the quarterback. Quarterback. We're doing a terrible job of protecting the quarterback. Uh, we've got people open. We just haven't got time to get him the ball. What about on defense? Well, defensively, we played pretty good. We've just given up a couple big plays. I uh, had guys covered, and, you know, Jamie Deese makes a, a great catch on one, and, uh, you know, you have to credit them when that happens. All right, Mike O'Kane headed to the locker room. Uh, he's not totally happy with this first half. 17-14, though, the NC State Wolfpack out in front of the Wake Forest Deacons. Our halftime activities on the way. ACC football is being brought to you by Park Avenue by Buick, the Ponder Statement. By Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people. By Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. By Alltel, where computing and communications converge. Alltel, always more than you thought. And by Food Lion, extra low prices and more goes to none other than Tory Holt of NC State. The senior from Gibsonville, North Carolina, had a remarkable performance last week down in Death Valley. Holt tallied 11 receptions for a whopping 225 yards and four touchdowns, including the game winner as the Wolfpack defeated the Tigers 46-39. For his performance... Halftime, Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh. It's NC State of Wake Forest, 17 to 14. Mike Hogwood with you now on a beautiful day in Raleigh, and who knows, Torrey Holt might be our Buick Player of the Week, second week in a row. He's had a big play in the first half, a reverse, a punt return for a touchdown that was called back for Wake Forest. Well, I think a Buick Player of the Week nominee might just be uh, Jamie Deese. He's the guy that they're having to go to now that Desmond Clark is out for Wake Forest. Remember, he caught that one big play, and then in a somewhat controversial play, uh, he thought he had made a catch, and the uh, referees ruled it incomplete. Well, it was NC State that got on the scoreboard first, but this has been a great first half. Jamie Barnett to Ryan Hamrick. Hamrick continuing to make big plays for the second week in a row, and State went up 7-0. Wake comes back to tie it at 7, and then uh, Kuklik to another wide receiver. I haven't really heard a lot of this year. Chris Modaleski, and uh, he made a big play and then they went in for a touchdown of 14 to 7 a touchdown on special teams and a field goal has NC State out in front well it's time now for us to take a look at our league leaders it's the Pepsi best of the ACC and one of the best quarterbacks in the league you're seeing him here today he is Jamie Barnett of NC State threw for four touchdowns in the packs 46 39 win over Clemson last week there you see the rest of the Quarterbacks led by Joe Hamilton of Georgia Tech having a great season. Hey, the man who caught those four touchdowns from Demi Barnett is Torrey Holt. He had an outstanding day for the Wolfpack, and he, of course, is among the league leaders in receiving. Peter Warwick of Florida State having a great year. Dez White, what a season he's having for the Ramblin' Wreck. Lamont Jordan of Maryland takes over as the second leading rusher in the conference after his 99-yard performance a week ago. The rest of the rushers you see there led by Tom of Virginia. And Kendall Ogle is half of the pair of the Terrapins occupying the top five tacklers in the league. 
Ogle is having a super season on defense. Brandon Spoon still leads the way for UNC. Eric Barton, who is Ogle's teammate at Maryland, also having a great year. And that's the Pepsi best of the ACC. Well, we're seeing the best of ACC football here this afternoon. Certainly a battle on Tobacco Road, which is far from over. A three-point game at halftime. The homestanding Wolfpack lead the Deacons. 17 to 14, our score. Bell South presents You Call the Play. Last week in Death Valley, the NC State Wolfpack trailed the Clemson Tigers 39-38. The Wolfpack has a first and goal from the eight-yard line with 42 seconds remaining and no timeouts left. Does Michael Kane keep it on the ground to set up the game-winning field goal? You Call the Play. After a Tiger timeout to set their defense, Michael Kane's Wolfpack is anything but conservative. Quarterback Jamie Barnett finds Torrey Holt in the end zone for the touchdown and the win. You Call the Play has been a presentation of Bell South. Halftime in Carter-Finley Stadium and NC State out on top. The go-ahead touchdown. Rodney Red recovering a Wake Forest fumbled punt in the end zone. Some heads-up play for the Wolfpack special teams that has them up now by three points. And as you heard Mike O'Kane say as he went to the locker room, they've got to do a better job second half protecting the NC State quarterback if they want to put more points and really get their offense going. But I think Wake Forest has some other ideas. Well, how about let's take a look now at our Domino's hot play of of the week. Our Domino's Hot Play of the Week is brought to you by Domino's Pizza and Domino's Heat Wave, a better way to deliver oven fresh pizza hot to your door. Last week, Des White got hurt on the first play of the game, but he came back and how? Came back to return a Terrapin kickoff 100 yards. White went through the kick coverage like a hot knife through butter and tied the game up at seven to earn our Hot Play of the Week. Call now for a delicious Domino's Pizza. Domino's delivering a million smiles away. And Des White certainly one of the great return men in the league. And Torrey Holt, we saw him almost get one. Looked like he had it, but a penalty flag brought it back. I'm sure he'll be trying to break one and maybe get our hot play for next week here in the second half for NC State. Now it's time for Around the League. Around the ACC is presented by Jefferson Pilot Financial. Only two other games in the conference today. Right down the road in Chapel Hill, the Maryland Terrapins are visiting the North Carolina Tar Heels. Their defense is tough. We'll update you on that score in just a couple of moments on our scoreboard. And at 3.30, the Virginia Cavaliers are in Tallahassee to face the Florida State. There it is, the Virginia Cavaliers in Tallahassee to face the Florida State Seminoles. The Cavs are one of only two teams to ever beat the Seminoles since they joined the league. And the Cavs need a victory to stay in the hunt for an ACC championship. That's the Jefferson Pilot Financial around the ACC. And again, just a couple of day games later today. Well, the band performing here at halftime. Great crowd, great day. We're looking forward to a great second half. More of our halftime activities, but first, a word from your local ACC station. And our congratulations to John Fletcher for all he does to help the community around the Raleigh area. 17-14, our score here. The Wolfpack out in front of the Demon Deacons. Well, this is a great ACC game, and I hope you're going to stay around for the second half. We've had a tradition in the last couple of weeks. These second halves going right down to the wire. Well, let's check out some other scores now. It's time for our Dodge scoreboard. Maryland and North Carolina. The Tar Heels getting two touchdowns from Nay Brown. They lead at halftime, 14 to seven. Arkansas over the Rebels of Ole Miss. Second quarter by a touchdown. Penn State and Michigan. Maybe an upset brewing at halftime. Notre Dame trails Boston College. That also at halftime. Maybe another upset there as well. Wisconsin and Minnesota, 10-7 at halftime in that Big Ten battle. And Air Force and Army, 8-7. Air Force with a pretty darn good team this year, 28-7, third quarter, that score. Well, our score here is 17-14. Let's throw it back up to the guys upstairs, Steve Martin and Doc Walker. And, guys, I think we're in for a whale of a second half. Well, the first half uh, is an indication I think we are, Mike. And you look at uh, the way that the offenses were running in the first quarter, Doc, I thought that really – I thought that uh, we're going to see a lot of scoreboard watching here in the second quarter though. Field position and defenses took over. I think a lot of it had to probably remind you of your game down in Clemson. Because yeah, well, you get a quick start and then all of a sudden the defense will make a play. And once again special teams has really been 
the dominant factor in this game. Well, it's going to provide the go ahead touchdown. In fact, let's take a look at the scoring on the highlights of the first half. As far as this game is concerned, in the first quarter, big plays set up scoring plays. This Ryan Hamrick 51 reception that set up a nice situation for NC State. Good throw and catch again. Barnett under pressure, but he threw a. That's a 50 yard connection. It sets up on the next play. They go to the corner. Rain Robinson gets it in. Robinson gets some good blocks outside by Corey Holt. Who else? Coleman. 7 0 State at this point in time. Another big play to set up a score here. Kukla going for Jamie Deese. Watch the catch. <laughs> Man. And Kukla calls his own number to tie it up at 7 all. Then, of course, it's uh, Wake Forest stepping up in front in the second quarter. This is a pitch to Keto Garrett. They need to get more out of the running game, and they're on that short yard situation they did. We haven't heard an awful lot from Torrey Holt, but here we will on this reverse, a 49-yard running play Just that he almost scored. Run away from people. You're right. How often do you say almost score for Torrey Holt? And Reggie Austin stops him there. That sets up this 20-yard field goal by Dan Deskovich. And Wake Forest lead is cut to four, 14 to 10. But here, special teams do the job. Austin fumbles a kick. Lloyd Harrison with a great play. Yeah, Reggie's played a heck of a game, too, but that time he team. And that uh, touchdown, of course, puts NC State ahead by a score of 17 to 14. Here's a look at our all tell halftime stats and from all appearances uh, both teams have pretty much gone away from the running game here. Yeah they have time. but it's a bad sign for Wake Forest because the continuance of bad things for the past three weeks running the football. And of course the turnovers even up at one all points off turnovers to NC State. Jamie Deese taking the place of Desmond Clark. He's got four receptions and 72 yards including that 48 yarder that helped set up their first score. We're at halftime. NC State leading Wake Forest. Second half action coming. Don't you dare go away. The Wolfpack up by three. Today's ACC football telecast is being brought to you by Dodge, the truck stop of the New South, the new Dodge. The South. Bell South is proud to be the official telecommunications company of the ACC. By Duckhead, Khaki, since 1865. By Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service, when your priority is fast delivery for less. By Domino's Heat Wave, just one more way Domino's is delivering a million smiles a day. By Amico, you expect more from a leader and you get it. And by Nationwide Insurance, for insurance coverage and financial services that meet your needs, call a Nationwide Insurance agent today and get Nationwide on your side. NC State leading Wake Forest here as we get set to start the second half. 17 to 14. Let's go to the field where Mike Hogwood's talking with Wake Forest coach Jim Caldwell. Thanks, Steve. Jim, what did you tell him at halftime? Well, you know, obviously we made quite a few mistakes in, in the first half. I obviously gave him a, a score on the fumble punt. And just so we stopped making mistakes, uh, I mean, we can we can hang in there and make some things happen. You know, we got to we gotta keep making certain that we're just fighting and scratching and making plays and don't miss any tackles. Any major changes offensively, defensively? No, none on either side of the ball. All right, they're ready to fight the second half, Steve. Thank you very much, Mike Hogwood. And joining us in the booth this afternoon, here in the third quarter, uh, Commissioner John Swafford is standing by between Doc and myself. And Commissioner, another day in the ACC, huh? Another three day point in the ACC, game. Steve, it's a great, uh, beautiful day for football. And you've got to be pleased, really, with what has happened over the last, you know, since Florida State's come into the conference, and now most recently we're starting to see an evening up in the competitive balance from top to bottom in the ACC. Well, I think we're getting there, Steve, and, and, and certainly Florida State. Uh, still sets the standard. There's mm -hmm. no question about that uh, in ways not only within the ACC but nationally what they've done over the last uh, what 11 years in a row that they've won 10 or more games and that's never been accomplished before. You've all the country in construction though in the ACC football facilities being built and stadiums being enlarged and a lot of good things that prospective uh, high school athletes ought to pay attention to. Doc, you're right. What the, the commitment that our schools are making to the sport of football is just phenomenal, and, and that uh, the facilities are, are a tangible example of that. And, and you're right; it's uh, throughout the entire league, and I think that bodes very, very well for the future of ACC football. Commissioner, I want you to hang in here for a while. We might even uh, toss it over to you for a play or two here, so you know, brush up on it. I'll call a pass play. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Dooley would never let me do that. <laughs> 
first and ten at the 20-yard line. NC State starts with the fullback in the opener, and that's Butler moving up to the 22-yard line. Tackle made there by Fred Robbins and also Brian Ray. If you look over the back of Justin Burroughs. It's an interesting story in his own right. He was a walk-on, actually as a wide receiver out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Can you imagine being a wide receiver? He has sure, certainly grown up, to say the very least. I mean, the guy, he shows you he was an athlete. But he also had the frame. He could add 30, 40, 50 pounds, made a commitment in the weight room, and wants to play. Quite a transition. He went, of course, he, he stopped at tight end on his way to center. So. Well, that means he's right there. He Ray Robinson slips a tackle and moves the ball out to the 38 yard line. And that's a nice gain on the play of 16 yards. Brian Ray on yet another tackle. John Swafford knows as an old quarterback, vision means a lot. But as a running back, it means everything. Now watch this. See, he gets the blocks, and right about there, he's got a decision to make where he's going to go with this football. And a guy who can make a good one because he's smart up top, allows his lineman to get the job done, and then does what he does best. Just drag the defender out of the way. It's first and 10 at the 38-yard line. NC State operating out of the shotgun. This is Barnett. Again, the option this time calls his own number. Barnett, a top hard runner. Look, Irish might try to take that football from him. But in the meantime, as they're trying to take the football, he's gaining four yards more. He moves it out to the 46. See, this is where I think they, they are really at their best when he's threatening the defense, putting you on your heels. What do you do? And when Barnett starts to ride down that line, see, he's in full control when those when he's got you there. See, he's taking it upfield. And when he's got that going for you, you are in big trouble. Michael Kane said they needed to run the option a little bit more. They've gotten away from it, or people have taken it away in the last couple of weeks. The option back to the other side, but the late pitch allows Myers. Jeffrey Myers to catch up with Ray Robinson, and it's a loss on the play of two yards back to the 44. Well, you can have no fear. We highlighted Myers in our open. He's a heady young man who loves contact. He's going to take a beeline, take away that angle, and boom, he's going to get you down. It brings up third coming down, about four. NC State three out of nine on third down conversions this afternoon as you look at Jeffrey Myers and the Wake Forest defense. Exciting second half. We're anticipating a lot of points here. And Barnett trying to keep his drive alive. Has some time. Fires complete to Robinson, but it's nowhere near the first down. In fact, he's thrown for a loss by DeLon Parrish of about three yards. So. So it works uh, to NC State, or rather to Wake Forest's favor, and we'll have a punt coming up. Another, of course, this is the first year of the Bowl Championship Series, Commissioner, and uh, Florida State looks like a, you know, they've got a big game this afternoon with Virginia, but if they win there, they find themselves possibly at the Citrus Bowl, definitely in the Orange. Well, yeah, the, the Bowl Championship Series, a great okay. thing about it, Steve, I think for football fans, is that it guarantees that number one will play number at the Rose Bowl being included. Uh, for the first time in, right. in what used to be called the Alliance. And uh, I think that's good for football. It, it, obviously, we're still going to have some uh, controversy as to who should be number one and who should be number two. It's a little bit kind of strange in the past years where Florida State has had a decisive advantage, but the NC State victory here early on, Georgia Tech flew up there and they had a lot of competition going on. And NC State got a lot of national recognition. Yes, they did, and deservedly so. Uh, it was a terrific win for NC State. And, uh, as you said earlier, the, the gap is, uh, is closing some, and, and uh, I think Florida State's staying right where they have been, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they've set that bar way up there, Doc, as you know, in our league, and I, and I think our teams are beginning to respond to that. The other thing, when you hear a lot of going on about coaches who are having a tough time with programs, I always say, look to how many kids they graduate to the NFL. Clemson, North Carolina had a ton of guys who play every Sunday. Well, they do. They, some of our and those two courts have been in two of our stronger programs uh, in recent years, and, and uh, they did. There's a number of those kids going uh, to the NFL. Didn't you? I mean, it's really. When you look around, and as I do every Sunday, I say there's a kid from Cavaliers yeah. or Tar Heel or yeah, in fact, Seminole. Like a, and a lot of people uh, don't realize this, but over the last two years, uh, more players from the Atlantic Coast Conference have been picked in the first round of the NFL draft than any other conference in the country, Boy, that's, which says a great deal yeah, for the oh, quality yeah. of play in this league, I think. Speaks volumes. Wake Forest now looking at a second and ten. They had a great opening play to Jamie Deese. Incompleted pass to the tight end Zelenka. And now Brian Kuklik at work again. Working from his own 35. 
A little inside screen. This is Chalmers. It's Chalmers working his way toward midfield. Rodney Red is among those who tackle him at the 49-yard line. It's a gain of 14. Mike, Mike Hogwood talked about redistribute the football with Desmond Clark out. Stone has had a reception. Every one of the four guys we highlighted has had a catch. Now, this is just being a good football player, squaring up the shoulders and trying to pick up additional yards. And Chalmers, Chalmers heads to the sideline. Yes, he's he player. is. He's listed second on the depth chart, but he came in catching 14 balls and two touchdowns on the way in. It's first and 10. Wake Forest now at their own 49 yard line. State showing blitz and Kuklik trips as he falls away from center. And by the way, that's Vince Azzolina at center. We talked about the problems that he might have today working with a fever of 103. It's usually the guard, though, that gets a quarterback. So that loses a play and loses some yardage. Second down, 13. Steve Martin here, Doc Walker, Commissioner John Swafford of the ACC is along with us. Mike Hogwood on the sidelines. And with others to help us with the broadcast here as the day goes along. Well, Coach Dooley's here. Yeah. I saw him in the chow line. <laughs> and we've got a flag down on the play. Courtney Mazze with the call. Dead ball. False start on the offense. Five yards. Still second down. Well, that hurts you. All right, there. There's the whole crew right there. This guy right here, that's Bob Kearns. That's our spotter. And we are set to go. Well, Bob's been paying. He's been waiting for that intro now. That's I've right. never been honored Bob to be, Kearney, actually. Be, be put in the announcing crew. That's uh, that's high cotton. <laughs> you call it that, huh, John? You guys do a wonderful job. Well, thank you. There's the pass incomplete, and Lloyd Harrison. He's gotten his hand on the football several times this afternoon. The pass intended for Chris McCoy. I thought Lloyd was going to lead both sides in receptions the way he started off in this ball game. Very little margin for error. Coach, what offense would you currently like to run from all that you've seen? What seems to be the most fun for you? The most fun? Huh? Well, it, you know, I, t I think uh, North Carolina State is, is maybe the most entertaining team to watch oh, yeah. offensively in our league. No question. NC State lines up five on the rush. They'll bring two. Kuklik steps up. Has a man downfield that's Chalmers, but guess who's step for step with him? Oh, Lloyd. Uh -huh. Lloyd took away. He squeezed him to the sidelines. That was very well done. It really was. A lot that goes with a conference and its dominance, obviously, is the emergence of freshmen that can step in and play. Carolina has shown you that was the number one high school football player in the country and why he was number one. NC State, six true freshmen. That have had an impact in this ball game. Yeah, and that's uh, again, that's another another indicator of uh, of the future of ACC football, not only the present and, and the quality of uh, players that are coming into the league. Here comes Holt, brings the crowd to its feet every time he touches the football. And there's a guy who will probably find himself mentioned early on that fateful Sunday in April. 38-yard punt and about a 10-yard return by Torrey Holt. NC State with the ball when we come back up by three. North Carolina State leading Wake Forest here by a score of 14-17. We're in the third quarter, and uh, Commissioner Swafford, why don't you tell us what's coming up next week? Next week, you got uh, two emerging programs in the Atlantic Coast Conference, Duke and Maryland on Jefferson Pilot. At 12 noon. I want to write. That should be a good one. Yeah, good open football game. two emerging programs. Yeah. Is my up. is my car running? You know, maybe I ought to just kind of leave here. Well, uh, you won't you miss it. <laughs> just keep up with JPSports.com <laughs> on the internet, which features our illustrious leader, Mr. Steve Martin, writing frivolous things. Oh, we try to dress it up here a little bit. First and ten, NC State working at their own 23-yard line. Butler, the fullback. Ray Robinson is the tailback. Back to throw. Barnett, straight drop back, five step drop, and there's Torrey Holt at the 40 yard line. Complete. And just like that, NC State snaps up about 14 yards, 17 exactly on the play. All right, Commissioner, what would you do? You've got a one on one matchup. You're impressed, man, with that gentleman right there, number 81, Torrey Holt. 
I would call for help <laughs> is what I would do. I, uh, he, he is a terrific football player. Uh, I cannot imagine there being a receiver in the, in the country, and I hope at season's end he gets the accolades that he deserves. Great player. Holt is lined up in the slot to the wide side of the field, and looking that way as Barnett picks it off his shoe tops and gets an extra yard. No. They're going to say that hit the, yep. uh, hit hit the, the deck. Down. Well, fielded it like a shortstop. So Holt off the miss. Yeah. His biggest play of the day has been a reverse. You know, we mentioned him as the Heisman candidate, and to show you the strength of this conference, there's a young man down at Tallahassee. Peter Warren. Yep. Who is a stud. I mean, a guy who gets it done uh, and a terrific athlete. There's Holt two of the, you're right, Doc. Two of, two of the best receivers in America are, are right here in our league. Yeah. Desmond Clark, Des White. I mean, it just, Georgia Tech is really blown up on our first. Here comes Holt, speaking of blowing up, one man to block. And a face mask penalty, but one that Reggie Austin had to take, otherwise, Holt was gone for six. Shoe strings, belt buckles. You grab anything you can grab <laughs> when you see number 81 flashing by you. They're going to tack an extra five, maybe 15 on the end of this one. But watch Torrey Holt. Well, he's everything. And a nice effort, too, out front. You got to have your buddies help you block, which is great. And we see, see it right there. Oh, yeah. That's a bad one, too. I don't, think, I, think, I don't think he meant to do it, but boy, when you hang on, you should jeopardize the kid's health. Six catch of the day for Torrey Holt. Feet a stiff arm. He has that Heisman pose down. <laughs> what did he have last week? 11 catches? Four Two touchdowns. 225. 225 yards. Had himself. <laughs> Some receivers don't get that in a year. And he had it in the afternoon. Actually, most of it in the second half. First and 10, NC State now working at the Wake Forest 20, actually 24 yard line. And off Robinson, and he's hit. And hit by Abdul Geis. Nice play by Geis, the junior from Rockledge, Florida. And Torrey Holt with that catch is number two all time in receiving yards and trying to reel in Clarkston Hines. You might think that might be impossible, but 318 left to catch Clarkston Hines, and he has two more games to do it. Yeah, I'd have to. Think that he's going to accomplish that this year if they stay healthy at the quarterback position. Second down. Here's Barnett. Has some time. Holt again. Holt dances inside and gets down to the nine yard line. A play that probably only should have gotten him five. Gets him 15. I know a lot of sports fans are at home and they're wondering, how in the world could you let a guy who's a Heisman candidate get this called crossing routes? See, whenever you go across the defense, it's very difficult to a guy to lock on in man. And he runs right underneath the linebackers, and it just creates terrible problems for a defense. Now let's watch it. See, kind of smooth. See, they're passing him along in the zone. And it's just tough to beat. Maybe you need to assign three or four guys to number 81. Great First. job by the offensive line there, oh, yeah. too, Doc, to give Good it time. time to develop. First and goal. Here's the pass, and it goes to Holt. Easy touchdown. That's Coleman. Coleman. Chris Coleman. That's a compliment for Chris, though. Yeah. It looked like Holt. <laughs> it looks like Holt. It catches like Holt, but it's Chris Coleman, who's a great receiver in his own right. And NC State lengthens their lead. That's the benefits of having a playmaker on the opposite side. He creates space for everybody on the field. Jamie Barnett, 15 of 24, 199 yards, quietly producing the type of numbers. Well, you know, we talk about these wide receivers. We can't forget the guy throwing him the ball, and he's done a splendid job all year long. And here's Dan Deskovich. Daniel Deskovich from Charlotte. Ready to kick. Walk on kicker. Drills it true. And we have a timeout on the field. Chris Coleman scores with 8.02 left to go here in the third quarter. NC State's lead is 10, 24-14. Coleman has just lifted NC State to a 10-point lead with a nine-yard touchdown reception from Jamie Barnett, which is his 43rd career touchdown pass. Barnett. He's making the call to the press box. Those are fun. Those are fun calls following touchdown. 
serious guy though. He's looking for more as NC State looks to nail down their sixth win and and that qualifies them for postseason. Then the fun begins. They figure out who goes where and why. Jamie Deese breaks out of the pack up the middle. But Adrian Wilson among others will bring him down at the 33 yard line. Brian Williams also in there. A day in the life of a kickoff returner. You return this one back. Takes a lot of courage. That and punt returners. No volunteers from here. No. Nope. <laughs> Maybe Hogwood. <laughs> I mean, what do you do? <laughs> oh. Yeah. He's saying, I'm a regular. I don't need this. First and ten. Handoff goes to Gary, but flags will stop this play before it gets underway. You know, before that touchdown, we'd had five straight possessions, six straight possessions, three aside where we had an interception and five punts. Ball start on the offense, five yards, still first down. Now you saw Jamie Barnett calling. Hey, fans, if you're hungry, now's the time to call Domino's. Domino's delivering a million smiles a day. Jim Caldwell stalking the sidelines, seeing his team down by 10. Looking at first down and 15 after the procedure penalty. They've had a tough injury here, haven't they? Yes, they have. Really they work. Work. So linebackers, and of course, with Desmond Clark out today, and Chris McCoy cannot make the catch at the 36 yard line. That can make such a difference in a team, too. I, I think the average fan really underestimates that, just how much difference that can make when yep. you have those key injuries, the yes. impact it can have. Here's the conference standings. You can see the impact it's had on Wake Forest. Knocking them out of, they were a team that started top 25 in the season. Florida State, 5-1 and 8-1, and, and, and they face the big hurdle this afternoon with Virginia. That one, and then there's Wake Forest left. They're the only ones standing between them and the seventh straight ACC football championship. Second down and 15. Cook will back to throw, and will it be good? Yes, it is. Jamie Deese. Looks like we've seen Jamie catch a ton of balls going down. He's able to cup those hands and secure the football. He's an excellent receiver. We talked a nice little charge off. Good plants. He rolls right over, gets down, and makes the catch. Third down coming in seven. Kuklik, his team down by 10. Trying to keep this drive going. NC State has pressure and they have Kukla. Edrick Smith, the first on the scene. Well, you wide receivers, one back. He tried to spread them out. He wanted to go to Jamie Dees. Give Eric Red a lot of credit because Red covered him one on one. Then you see the see inside game. Pretty good blitz pickup. Ball's got to be released really sooner. But there was nobody to throw it to. Great coverage by NC State. And so the punter comes on, Trip Moore. And pressure by State. Flag on the play. Could be a roughing call. Holt is back there to catch it. And he's brought down at the 25 yard line. But the flag is back where Trip Moore took the punt. If I'm Michael Kane, I think I'd say, hey, Tory. You can fair catch a few of those. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we got to need you on offense. Especially there's a flag yeah. on there. Personal foul, roughing the kicker on the defense, 15 yards, first down. Our personal foul this game. Well, we always say it balances itself out. Yeah, you got to protect him. Now, how much acting involved? A little bit. Now, let's watch Tory. Tory, for a catch out. <laughs> for, your... <laughs> for us, we're selfish. Yeah. We want to see more of you. <laughs> The least penalized team in the conference has just given up a major penalty here to Wake Forest that keeps the Deacons drive alive. Same thing happened to NC State in the first half. And so Wake Forest now has the ball with new life at the 45 yard line. Their own, and now they'll call timeout. So last time they had the ball on first down, they had a procedure. You know, they've had it just not been real fluid on offense. 
So there's Jim Caldwell waiting to talk to Brian Kuklik. With 6.28 left to go in the third quarter. Hank Small is talking there. And as you look at the folks in the booth, I want to seek the official sanction here. The announcers for this game, those three you see listed, and Mike Hogwood on the field, are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. All right. Is it all right? I think it's all right. What about that compensation part from Jefferson Pilot? Oh, that's highly negotiable. Yeah. Is that negotiable? Yeah, highly, highly compensated. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jimmy Rayburn would be the guy who deserves a high five for that one. <laughs> Jimmy Rayburn does a terrific job with uh, producing ACC football. Juggles a lot of schedules. Yes, he does. A lot of things to do. It's very. You've had some good games this year. You had some real good games this year. Yes. We really well, have. Last week was an excellent example of that. We had a great game here yeah. uh, at NC State a uh, few weeks ago. There's Kuklik on the day, 18 of 32, first and 10 from his own 45-yard line. Fresh light given by the penalty. He's back with a play-action fake and a go on. And he's wanting Jamie Deese and Lloyd Harrison is in the vicinity. They're both claiming they were interfered with. I like old Lloyd, man. He has a casual bump. You know, and the key to for Lloyd is he looks back and finds the football. And I think that's why he's allowed to do it. And then you got to complain is if you were victimized. Now watch it. See, Lloyd feels the pressure, and then eventually he might get the hit around. See, there it is. And if you turn and look, then you can lean. It's a good job. It really is. You know, we would be remiss if we didn't mention the outstanding job that our director has done. Paper check. Paper check. Oh, just just a terrific job. It's just bad. Pay us later, Bill. LeVar Fisher looking like he's going to blitz. And he is. There's a pull down there. He's in pursuit. And he, Brian Cook, looked down to the 34 yard line. We have a flag down on the play at the 38. Oh, yeah. Greg Derrick. That's the third sack of the day. Doc, you caught that one right off the bat. Oh, yeah. Let's catch a pool on that one. Big guys up front. Greg Derrick, terrific pass rusher. This guy has some skills. LeVar Fisher, the outstanding freshman. And you'll see it pretty good right there. I mean, that's just clear. That one's clear. Beautiful Boy, takedown. And that allows offense. LeVar Fisher to get and in. How can you not like LeVar? Two freshmen out of Beaufort, North Carolina, 6'1", 223. Was a running back. Well, he had 1,043 yards in high school and 143 tackles. Scores elsewhere. North Carolina's added a field goal. Arkansas by two touchdowns over Ole Miss. Our score is 24-14 NC State. Here comes the draw. And Keto Gary gets a little bit of running room on third down, gets some room for Trent Moore, and the punting unit will come on. Just McCoy, the receiver. I was just about to say 15 rushes, minus three yards. And then they get a bit of a breakthrough. Well, when they know what's coming, it's easier to defend. And now NC State will line eight up on the line as they have Torrey Holt back to receive the kick of Trent Moore. Give the pack defense some credit. They had a penalty, gave up the football, came out, snuffed the fire out. Oh, block. Kick is blocked. I think it was Chris Coleman who got it. And Leak will carry it out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Boy, just, just pure nastiness on special teams. I think Chris Coleman, who has blocked a kick already this season, will get this. Watch 84. How can you not? I don't know, 29 or 54. I need a guy on that. That was that was tough to figure out as to who it might have been. Brian Williams. Yep, the true freshman. Let's check it out. All we know is that talk about a flurry of red. Take it right off the foot. There it is. Yep. Boy, that's perfect. Yes, Williams. That is perfect. That is Brian Williams. Lloyd Harrison. He's around it again. Great special teams play by the Wolfpack. They've already cashed in on one punt recovery today. Here's Barnett. Pass complete to Holt. Watch him go. Knocked out of bounds at the 15. Make it the 16-yard line. Geis in on the tackle with Teron Carpenter. Boy, they come after you hard. They get a turnover, and then they go right to number 81. And this time, Damon Daniel actually slipped. I love the ground-level shots. Now watch this. Ball comes right 
good hands, make a miss, turn it upfield for more. Bingo. Gives you a chance to make the tap. Well, if you've done it then, you've got a flag for a late hit. Here's Butler, the fullback. Butler chucks his way down to the five-yard line. David Moore with a shoestring tackle, but not before Jeff Butler, the fifth-year senior from Altamont Springs, Florida, got inside the 10. Boy, Ryan Canuto, when you get a big play, one of those big hogs up front, got it done. Let's watch the left guard in this play. Ryan Canuto, number 70, little tag scheme, center, great block up front. See, he clears out. He didn't have to hit anybody because there's nothing there. Downfield just chugging along. Here again, Ian Rafferty always in the action. Toughest offensive lineman NC State has, and that's according to all of their coaches, especially the defensive coaches who play against them. First and Bennett with time across the green. Intercepted! Jeffrey Myers intercepts the ball. Barnett's the only one who can stop him. Oh, he's he's still on his feet and brought down at midfield. Justin Burroughs, the center, gets him. Just when you think the scale is tipped one direction, Jeffrey Myers comes back and takes the ball on his. This is going to be his second interception of the season. Hey, buddy, that's senior leadership. And then you are for being threatened right here in the goal line. He reads it. Boy, you talk about a key breaker trying to go to Devon Smith. And then Myers, the senior out of Stone Martin, George, Stone Mountain, Georgia, is a rumbling. Out to the 50-yard line. Ah, maybe NC State got too cute. Power football got him down there, and then they abandoned it. Tried to trick him. Kilklick with a new life at midfield. Fires a gun to Deese, complete. Harrison got him down, but they'll mark him at the 36-yard line of NC. Give him a 13-yard gain. One thing about it, and, uh, Charlie Fisher and Bobby Kennedy, both receiver coaches on both sides of the ball, have got a lot to be proud of because these guys catch the ball with the hand. Now watch this. He's going to go up right there. And they suck that ball in. They secure the football. as a text work outside by the wideouts. And both sides of the ball, they block doing running plays. For Jamie Barnett, that's his fifth, actually sixth interception of the season and his second of the day. First was a heave into the end zone as the first half ended. Kilklick is being chased by Rashad Streets, but he's complete to Marvin Chalmers. And Chalmers is out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Driven there by Harrison and Perry. Oh, Chalmers, I like him. Kid has a little swagger about him. Redshirt freshman. You watch him at the end of this play again. They sprint the pocket out. They secure the edge. There you see at the bottom of that pile, there's Jeff Flo. Now watch it. And they look it in, get you a few more yards. And then at the end, shows you a little of that athletic arrogance I like. Four down country now at the nine-yard line, first and goal. Can they run, Steve Martin? Can they run it? That's the question. Keto Gary did it last time. A flare to Deese in the end zone. Touchdown! They don't have to run it. Nope. What a catch by Jamie Deese. And the first one on the field to celebrate is Desmond Clark. Coaches in there, don't hurt yourself. We need you next week against the Seminoles. <laughs> Boy, beautiful, beautiful throw and catch. Oh, doesn't that mean? What concentration. Coach, how did you stop that? you the DB. <laughs> I don't know that you can. If it's executed properly, it's Man, just it's nice. almost impossible to stop. And that was to perfection yeah. right Got there. Got a high five from his coach, Bobby Kennedy. Eight, That's so neat. Eight catches for Deese, 116 yards and a touchdown. He had nine catches against NC State a year ago in Wake Forest win. Here's the kick by Burden, and it is good. And it's a typical NC State Wake Forest finish here in Raleigh with 3.58 left to go in the third quarter. NC State 24 21 will return after these messages from your local station. Wake Forest cuts the margin to three. Jamie D scores his sixth career touchdown, actually seventh, and you'll see it from several angles. Oh, we love this from the eyes of the quarterback. He looks right out, sizes it up, looks for Lloyd Harrison. His guy has an advantage. Boy, go up and get it out of the air. Why don't you, Jamie Dees? Let's take the footwork. Real nice. Nice loft. Very difficult throw to make. He makes it look easy. But the ball thrown in his stride. Yes, indeed. By Brian Kuklin. Eight receptions, 116 yards. A score, 14.5 a clip. That's, uh, you know, 
Desmond Clark sitting next to him wishing he could get a piece of this action coaches say that sprain that bruised knee is probably two days away from being ready so he should be ready for Florida State next week. I think Mr. Deese has earned his meal money for next week. So, so Tyler Ash to kick it away. Line shot will be taken by Ricky Collins at the two. Collins is driven out of bounds at the 20 yard line. And let's go to the sidelines. Mike Hogwood standing by. The attitude on this Wake Forest bench is just incredible. And you got to give a lot of credit to senior Brian Kuklick and the other seniors who refused to let the team fold when it could have easily. When they were on the bench when State was on offense, Brian Kuklick was telling Marvin Chalmers, he says, hey, you just run the route. I'm going to get the ball there. We're not going to lose to these guys today. Incredible attitude on this bench. Really impressed by the way uh, Wake Forest stayed in the game. Got a flag down on the field. And it's going to be against NC State, and it's going to back them up to the six-yard line. Look at that. Three of their losses this season by seven points or less. And then you turn it around to NC State. Three of their wins this season have been by seven points or less. Well, I think it goes back to the stat that you brought out in the first half about field goal attempts. And PAT Versus attempts. PAT attempts. I mean, that's incredible. And that's been a concern for Jim Caldwell, scoring seven in the red zone instead of three. Doing a pretty good job on that today, however. Here is Holt. Little flare pass out to the flats. And Holt does the rest. Uh-oh, that might be a hanky. When in doubt, throw to 81. Yep. Get your offense going. Let's put you in a linebacker situation. Well, you just love that. Takes the inside. Get to hold. Great side. Got Coleman just trying to help. You just one guy just can't bring him down. I mean, you look at that, they were in position. Austin was there. Now listen to this. Well, that, that might be late, but it might have been late on our microphone holder. You might be right. Back to Barnett. And it's the hope complete. And he's hit immediately by Damian Daniel. Steve, that's the key. If you're going to catch underneath, I have to put a Rydell in your rib cage. That's the only way you can discourage that and kind of pound on a wide receiver. See, Tony Holt is still too fresh to have done the things that he's done today because he hasn't been hit that often. See, you give him some of that. Yep. And that'll slow any wide receiver down. It's a gain on the play, however, of nine. Holt today, 10 catches, 123. He's carried once be nine yards. Takes a rest on the sidelines as Butler picks up the first down at the 30 yard line. Fullback has been really effective for NC State. Oh, Jeffrey's been a, been a main claw. He's gotten it done. Alex Rice and Justin Burroughs and Ryan Knutson up front have done a good job. And that's the key now. You try to go out and recruit people and Commissioner, we were talking a little while ago about, you know, 85 rides now. That puts a premium on them on everybody that you bring in. It really does, uh, Steve. You can't make many mistakes recruiting wise with that number limitation. Here's Barnett. And his pass is blocked. McCovic was in there on the play as the pass goes harmlessly off. Barnett has scored two interceptions and has that one blocked. Steve, that also spreads the uh, spreads the talent out to yes, because it does. years ago when you had a few programs that could just stockpile and recruit 120 players and, and uh, that takes good players away from other programs and I think that uh, that uh, the 85 scholarship limitations have had a great deal to do with uh, uh, leveling things out. Team yep. to team, program to program. It helped corporate America though, because a lot of good players didn't get a chance to play enough and went on and got great jobs. It might have been playing on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. on the program. Fumble on the snap and the shotgun, and Barnett will do all he can to rescue this with Fred Robbins on the job. And that's a loss on the play of about four yards. You know, it brings us back to something that you guys were talking about, and that is, well, okay, if we're going to have to fight for every player, then we might as well build up our facilities. To make them the best that they can be, to make all the schools attractive. Well, the, the schools certainly want to have every advantage uh, that they can have from a recruiting standpoint. And, and the fact of the matter is that facilities uh, show a tangible commitment to the institutions, uh, how, how strongly they have a sport, and that, that makes an impression on uh, young people. With all the red and white here, I mean, this place today is third and 14. 
Barnett back to throw. Here's a gun for Holt. It is complete. And Austin has him at the 49, actually the 48-yard line. Driven out of bounds with a minute 48 left to go on the third. And what do you say? You're James Bell, the defensive coordinator for Wake Forest. You have to look at Reggie Austin and say, son, you were right where you should have been. But look at the speed and the velocity on the football. I mean, Jamie Barnett. Whew. You are Torrey Holt, and you caught the ball. And there he is. Nope. Fumble picked up by Wake Forest. This is going to be Reggie Austin after Ray Robinson fumbled after the carry. Well, Wake is getting nasty. They, they just will not give up on this. Mike Hogwood mentioned it. You talk about confidence. And I think it's got to start with their coach who hasn't panicked. They had a few bad plays go against them, but they stay in it. And here we go. Robinson, the rookie, nice hole, gets inside and the ball gets popped out. I guarantee you somewhere along that line, Mikovic had to be there or Myers. One of those two maniacs had to be there. See the chip by Rollins? See the chip block by Bowling, Nathan Bowling. Reggie Austin, who's intercepted the ball today, forces the third Wolfpack turnover. And Wake Forest determined to change this ball game around. They've recaptured the momentum. Here's Cooper back to throw. And he's going for Jamie Deese, and it is incomplete. Yeah, threw it off his back foot. I mean, he's backpedaling. He's got to get back, set up, and throw strong. If he does that, they'd have had a chance there to move the chains. Instead, it's going to be second down and 10 at the 23 yard line. We talked about facilities. You know, one of the things that I think is impressive with some of the schools and the way they've responded. Look at Florida State in building Doak Campbell Stadium. Not only built an athletic facility, but they built an academic facility around the football stadium. Very unique setup that uh, works well for, as you said, both the academic and athletic side of, of Florida State. And Kuklik is caught from behind. Three Wake Forest offensive linemen around Greg Derrick, and he still made the play. Well, Coach told us yesterday, Coach Snipes, Ed Briggs told us that if this kid gets his motor going on, I mean, you can't stop him. 6'6", 274 pounds, and he can rush to pass it. That is relentless. It really is. Wilmington hanging all over his back. Michael Collins, the guys up front playing the right tackle spot. So nobody's been able to block him in front. And the reason you haven't heard much from him this year, he's been nicked up by injuries. But as Doc said, he's got the size. Third down, 16. Wake Forest down by three. Blitz is on. Pass is knocked away and almost intercepted by Perry. Intended for Chris McCoy. Marcel Huff also in on the play. So the turnover goes for not, and Wake will cut it away. Look at the total offense for Wake Forest. They wanted to get something on the ground. There's nothing doing there. And they'll punt it away down by three. Boy, this is a ball game. <laughs> this is a ball game. To have no yards rushing and to be in a ball game on the road says a lot about your team. Trip Moore back to kick. Torrey Holt will have a chance to return this one. Moore, the ACC's second best punter. And this is a good kick by Moore to the 26 yard line. And up on field tackle. And that is made by Damian Daniel. That's awesome. Wow. 54 yard punt by Moore and Damian Daniel made it stand up with a great open field tackle. Yeah, you, you just can't put a value on that one. One of your starters recognizes that a great player is opposite him on special teams and gets down and takes this thing seriously. Watch the tackle. See, hit across the bow, boy, that's nice. Right, that sure was. <laughs> that's not easy, not to, easy do to do either when not it's story one back there. Imagine what I'd well, imagine what you'd feel like. You got 81 back there, and it's just you and him. And everybody knows if you miss, first and ten at the 23. Play action for Barnett. Good protection. Pass a little too tall that time. And it was intended for Hamrick over the middle. And Barnett hit as he let go. He had a lot of time. I mean, that was a late rush. Trying to get him to speed it up. We want to speed the operation up. 262 yards. The average is 289 in passing yards of game. Uh, the, the two INTs that were there, that's the thing that's, that's the problem. 
Kind of quick on me today. They got me. <laughs> it's tough when you're an artist. Well, it's nice. Second down. Hand off Bray Robinson. They'll cradle the ball this time. They got a nice run out to the 39 yard line. It's a gain of 15. Kind of like to see this. Love to see a true freshman. Have a bad play, come right back, give him the ball, and show you that he's got some skills. Boy, I love the trap. See the trap? There's a void right in there. The trap block came there, knocked him out, and then he is gone. Now watch this again. That's just nice. But he had a lot of help from the big boys in red. Ian Rafferty out there again. Oh, nice trap. Here is Butler, the fullback, and Jeff Butler. Pulling up some good first down yardage. Gets six out to the 46-yard line. As we roll down to the end of the final of the third quarter, and NC State's going to find themselves on top. Jeff Butler gives them six yards, and they'll be second and four when we come back. He's just four yards shy of midfield. Three quarters down, one more to go. We're no closer to getting a winner here. Stay with us. DC football is brought to you in part by Bell South Mobility DCS. We welcome you to Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina. Wake Forest, Stephen Deacon uh, cheerleaders have something good to cheer about. Their team has come from 10 down. They trail by three on a beautiful nine yard hookup from Brian Kukla to Jamie Deese. We saw the defenses take over here in the second half. Turnovers have been a factor. There are three for NC State and one for Wake Forest. And our Duckhead stats through three quarters of play bear out the evenness of this contest in all categories save for one. And that is yeah. rushing yards. Yeah, that's talk about a clear cut stat. A scary <laughs> boom. 136 to nothing. <laughs> NC State with the ball, and this is Ray Robinson. And this is Watson. Turns the defender back. Can he make the end zone in time? Yes, touchdown, NC State. Boy, that's the way to bounce back for a young freshman. Confident, knew he could play, made a mistake, redeemed himself. That is big time. Got his chance for the injury to Rashawn Sprikes, who will come back next week. But Robinson now with his second touchdown of the day, 54 yards officially on the carry. He has 120 yards in 15 carries. And the Wolfpack now up by nine, pending the kick by Daniel Deskovich. Out of the hold of Ryan Hammer. And it is good. And NC State now stretches their lead to 10, 31. Could you look at the play again? Well, Robinson made up his mind that he was not going to be the guy responsible for spoiling Torrey Holt's final game here at home. Boy, that's, that's, that's everything you want out of a running back. Vision, speed, quickness. Smarts and he finishes. Outstanding run by a true freshman. And only nine seconds into this fourth quarter, the Wolfpack lead here by 10, and the homecoming crowd happy. Toughest ticket to get around the Raleigh area. It's sold out, and they are enjoying on a cool autumn like sun splash day a great ACC matchup. And Ray Robinson, the true freshman, making his mark. You know, when NC State went recruiting this year, mm -hmm. Michael Kane went out and he got five linebackers and five running backs. Not all of the running backs showed up at running back position. You nope. got a couple of them sprinkled in the secondary. Yeah, but they all started. They had a chance to at least spend a day at every spot. And they took the natural guys that seemed to just adapt to those positions. All by that gentleman in the center of your screen, Michael Kane. But you know what? And I'll feed off what Mike Hogwood said earlier. I don't think Wake's out of this. You know, I'm I, I, speaking of Mike Hogwood, let's go to him on the sidelines for more. I, I talked a moment ago about the leadership of Brian Kukley. You got to give a call to Jamie Barnett because when when Robinson made that fumble, it was Barnett who came up to him on the bench, put his arm around him and said, hey, man, don't worry about it. I've made the same mistake before. I threw an interception. Forget about it. Put it behind you. Then about four other seniors came over and said, look, let's just go back out and play. They made him feel really comfortable. And look what he did. That's you know, the since the fumble, since the fumble, he's got 79 yards and a touchdown. Yeah. So he has it. no yards rushing. And that was in three plays. Ooh. Here's Chris McCoy. And McCoy has a ball and gets.
gets up to the 31. Adrian Wilson in on the stop for NC State. So Wake Forest gets a chance to do something here now. Offense is starting to pick up a little bit. Really are. Good clicking on. The thing about this is that I, I, we talked about it, we hammered it. But when you have no yards rushing yeah. and you're in a game on the road, I, that says a heck of a lot about your people. Well, now you're down 10 with 14.41 left to go. You won't get much out of the run for the rest of the day. It's just getting your people open and making sure the quarterback has time to throw the football. And so State showing blitz. They bring two. Cook looks pass complete to McCoy. And McCoy dances through blockers, and McCoy is on his way. But Red ran him down. Whoa. That Rodney Red kept run. Rodney Red ran him down at the 20-yard line. <laughs> But it's a beautiful gain on the play. A 45, make it uh, 49 yards. Boy, nice blocking up front. Jeff Flo kind of watched it down. Satire up front, good throw and catch. Now watch the run. Good chip. Boy, that helps out a heck of a lot. William Merritt with the chip. And it looked like uh, it was gone until Red said, nah. Not on that play. First. Watch the chip. Boy, that's neat. Head in front. First and 10 from the 23. Copeland, three-step drop, fires complete to Marvin Chalmers down to the 17-yard line. That's interesting what we heard the NC State coaches say yesterday, that Wake Forest does one thing particularly well. There are a lot of things well, but one thing particularly well, they pick up blitzes. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, when you are an offense that knows that the defense knows you're going to throw, man, those people up front do a tremendous job in recognition. In fact, Wake was going to try to fake blitz, or North Carolina State was going to try to fake blitz a couple of times and try to shake Kuklik up. That's the area where they don't respond well. Second down. And about five. It's Merritt in motion. Here comes Kuklik to throw. Complete to McCoy. McCoy in touchdown. Wake Forest. Nice drive. Very nice drive by Wake Forest. I, I just had a feeling, man. They're not out of it. No, they're not. They're not out of it. I mean, Mike Hogwood mentioned it walking around their sidelines about these guys felt that they were in it. They've shown no panic on the sidelines. Watch the movement on this play. The guard tackle pulled down. That brings that time. Derek, great Derek comes down. A wide open number one, Chris McCoy, and he leans in and gets the score. There's a fumble on the snap, and the snapper, that is Jimmy Caldwell, has to carry it out of there. Adrian Wilson brings it down. He did all he could to try to get that snap and resurrect it into a kick for Burdick, but that's going to be key. So that leaves Wake Forest four points back, but Chris McCoy has scored his first touchdown of his career on a pass hookup from Brian Kuklick. 31-27 the score here in Raleigh. Wake Forest draws to within four, but they don't get the three because they botched the extra point on the bad snap from center. But let's see how Chris McCoy brought Wake Forest to that point. Well, he had a series. He really did. Watch him. Suck that ball right in and square it up and found the end zone. And for McCoy, that followed a 50-yard, five-yard gain earlier in the drive. So he had two big plays, the big gainer, and, of course, the touchdown. I think the point with that we have to stress the leading rusher Morgan Kane out leading receiver Desmond Clark have not played in this game they are on the road and it's 31 27 and you add to the defensive injuries that they have suffered yes. all season yeah two leading with a leading tackler talk about Dustin Lyman and they, not, they don't have a ground on the a rushing yard no <laughs> yeah no. they're threatening they are four points back and getting set to kick it off is Tyler Ash once again Adrian Wilson and Ricky Collins are back deep to receive for NC State. Still plenty of time left. 13-32 left in the fourth. 31-27. We've had two touchdowns in the first 90 seconds of the fourth quarter. Collins one yard deep. Collins coming right up through, and he is um, and brought down there by Nick Bender. We've mentioned Nick's name as often as I thought we would. Another look at our Nations Bank ACC Salute to Excellence question. Which ACC school was the first in league history to have three players named first team AP All-America in the same season? The answer, the 1997 season, North Carolina had three players named to the AP All-America team. Greg Ellis, Dre Bly, and Brian Simmons. Now you log on 
to ACC.com and file your answer, and you could get yourself some tickets to the go, hey. ACC Bowl Championship. Go, hey. Jamie Look. Barnett changes up, first and 10 at the 23. Pass yeah. complete to Holt. Little slant in from the top side, and it's good for a first down to the 36 yard line. Teron Carpenter on the tackle. Yeah, nice little timing route. Run the slant in. There you see, Holt makes you think streak, snaps it off. Ball right there, good hands. And NC State moving. Four points, they know it's not enough. The way the Wake Forest has moved the football today. Three wide outs and a stoppage of play. And now a timeout called by Wake Forest. They've got two left with 13.05 left to play. Actually, they're down to their last timeout. And the NC State Wolfpack holding a four point lead. We'll take a timeout and be right back. NC State 31, Wake Forest 27, 13.05 left to go in the fourth quarter. Every game has its turning point, and this one for Wake Forest turned on a key defensive play. NC State was driving. You see the end zone five yards away. Here is Barnett back to throw against the grain reach, and out of the one-yard line, Three Myers returns the interception, his second of the season, 49 yards to midfield, and that was the turning point for Wake Forest that's kept them in here. You put a weight on North Carolina State score on the board at that time, and it's a 17-point game. And maybe not as hopeful for the Demon Deacons. NC State now moving at their own 36-yard line after the first play to Holt. Here's Ray Robinson. He's had a great day. Two touchdowns and 120 yards rushing, and he adds 11 yards there. Tackled by Adrian Duncan. I'll tell you what's impressive about Ray Robinson to me. It's what he does after contact. Nice little delay. Point of attack. Now watch him. No one's touched him at this point. There he gets something. Now watch him. Two yards, three yards, four yards more after contact. True freshman running back. Very impressive. And that interception followed the block of a Wake Forest punt by NC State that had Adams 33. Here's North Carolina State at their own 46. And off Robinson again. And now uh, more big yardage. Goes down in the grasp of Teron Carpenter after a seven-yard game into Wake Forest territory at the 47. Elsewhere around the country and the ACC, of course, just down the road in Chapel Hill, the Tar Heels taking command with a minute left in the fourth, up 24-7 on the Maryland Terrapins. And in the SEC, Arkansas holds service at home. They're leading in the fourth by 24 points. Hogs and balls coming yep. up. Yep. On the horizon. Mm -hmm. Second down, four. NC State moving at the Wake Forest 47. Hand off Butler. And Butler gets about two. It's down to the 46, maybe the 45. It'll bring up third down and a long two. In on the tackle, Fred Robbins and Nathan Bowling. This is a drive here, Doc. And NC State starting to has established themselves on the ground thanks to Ray Robbins. Yeah, they have. You know, Butler, Rafferty, Burrows. Smith, Holt, Butler, Jones, those guys, seniors on that offense, just battling. Cotton, Derek, Perry, Red. I mean, you just, the last time here at home, they're giving you a great effort. Third and two. NC State leading by four, handoff Robinson, and Robinson has the first down. Down to the 41 yard line of Wake Forest. Teron Carpenter in on the play. Pure running back. The good ones are just comfortable with the ball. Just give him the ball. Nice block at the point of attack by Butler. That's all he needs. Get him started. He hit him and he still gets a couple of more. Well, the influence of Torrey Holt, Forest defensive schemes, they have six defensive backs in the game. Only five down linemen, so it allows you to run the ball a little bit. And this time, DeLong Parrish, one of those defensive backs, pairs up with Nathan Bowling, and they throw Ray Robinson for a three-yard loss back to the 45-yard line. Parrish makes the tackle back on the 45. Nathan's been in the mix all day long. That's what he does. He's disruptive. Brian Ray, see Robbins. DeLong Parrish coming up from his... Sounds of the game as Delon Parrish makes the stop. 
And there's Robbins and Bowling as they get ready to line up defensively. Second down and 13. He stayed up by four. No blitz on Barnett with time to throw. And the pass is deflected by Coleman. Butler couldn't come up with it because he was ready to throw a block. That was yep. Grant Carpenter would have been a hero on that one. That's the old tip drill. It's amazing how close you can be in this game to victory or defeat. And there's a tip. See, he's bobbling that, and he almost pulls it in. Wow. <laughs> he can feel it. Boy, he can feel it. It's Teron Carpenter. He's a redshirt freshman from Amityville, New York. Third down and 14 for NC State. Barnett, time to throw. Pass is incomplete, intended for Torrey Holt, and great coverage by Reggie Austin. Nice, nice job. Once again, Austin by Reggie Austin. Now, I think Torrey has got to take a little tip from the punters. Maybe be a better actor after this. Maybe beg for a call. See, nice little stem. See, the way he lowers that weight. Stops down and that time. So you got to be violent about it. You got to start waving your arms around now and say, I need a flag. And just, a guy like him may get one. Scott Earwood back to punt. Kicking game has provided some anxious moments. Earwood gets it down there, and it's going to be Austin calling for the fair catch at the 14 yard line. 9.54 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Wake Forest down by only four. One thing to remember here, Doc, of course, they have one timeout left. They burned one early in the third. It may come back to haunt them. We'll take a break and be right back with more at NC State with a Wolfpack lead by four. North Carolina State leading Wake Forest, 31-27. Wolfpack trying to nail down qualification for postseason. Wake Forest trying to make a run of the table in October that will get them in the same shape. First and 10 from their own 15, and the pass is incomplete. He's just caught eight already today. Covering on the play, Lloyd Harrison. Bobby Cotton making his presence known for the Wolfpack defense. Another senior in his last game here. Carter Fennel, Coach Caldwell, who keeps a mild demeanor. Man, I'd be a very lunatic <laughs> over there. Some of the things that happen, he just keeps it smooth and easy. And his players respond. Yep. They don't get too far down. They don't get too way up. Zelenka now in motion across the formation. Chris McCoy is back there to protect Cook, but the pass is deflected, but Jamie Deese catches it. I think Bobby Cotton got in there and got a hand on it again. It's not for much yardage, but it's not a sack, and it's not incomplete. Well, that's what you need now. You, you're so close. A tip, a strip. Anything that you can get extra, you're right. Good concentration. Gio Deeser decided to take it in. There was nothing happening. Brought down by Scott. Big third down play. Tony Scott made the tackle, and we're ready to go. Wake Forest trailing by four. They need a first to keep this going. State showed blitz, backed off. Screen to McCoy. McCoy outside, gets the first down for Wake Forest. After the 28-yard line, no flags on the play. Rodney Red on the tackle, and Wake moves the chain. Man. It's a nice call, but it's the only call they have, really, because they, they haven't run the ball. They've done this three or four times. Look at the receivers here, getting down in that area, blocking down, coming in. I mean, that makes a big difference. They got everybody on somebody. Jamie Deese, 21, Stone, number two. Everybody on the outside chipped in. Good operation. Marvin Chalmers is split wide to the top side. Jamie Deese wide to the bottom side. Now Keto Gary is back in there, tailback. Play action, sprinting out. This Cook on. And Kuklik driven out of bounds dangerously in front of the NC State bench by Adrian Wilson. You, know, you don't often see Brian get out the pocket. Keto Gary gave him an edge. Let's see if we what we might have done for that. We can be armed to your quarterbacks on this one. Nice block by Gary. Do you cut that upfield or you take it out? I guess if you're throwing quarterback, you take it out. If you're running quarterback, you take it upfield. A great block by Gary who oh, took yeah. out big Greg Derrick. Awesome. Second down and five. Kuklik with play action. Has time. Has a man open, and then it's Chalmers at midfield. Nice completion of 15 yards. 
And that moves the chain and Wake Forest on the march again. Yeah, that was nice. But boy, if Chalmers could have caught that ball standing up running, he might have still been going. Great pass pro. I think you mentioned it early, man. We enough about the protection that they give Kukla, realizing that that's what they're going to do, just throw the ball. Kukla with 357 yards passing. That's a new single game career high. This man who today became Wake Forest's most prolific passer. Marvin Chalmers across the formation, rolling to the left. Here's Kuklik. Cotton gets blocked, and now Kuklik will go down. Yeah. Cotton was there, and also Clint Johnson. And Wake Forest fans might be wondering now, well, why take the sack? Because he had nobody on the right side of the field he could throw the ball to. And you might have gotten intentional grounding on that one. There was nobody on that right side. Jeff Flo, your right tackle at the top of the screen. See, Jeff thinks it's going to be a backside protection. But no, because there's Cotton 36. Nice effort by Gary. They just converged. Good effort by the down lineman of NC State. Clint Johnson, Bobby Cotton get it done. It's a sack, the fifth of the day for NC State. And 11 on the play. Second down and 21. Kirkland steps up. Deep's complete. His ninth of the day. Harrison pulls him down at the 27 yard line of NC State. Oh, brother. 34 yards on the hookup. Nasty. Imagine if they had Clark play. I mean, what he's done, Jamie Deese has just stepped up. He did everything we asked him to do in the open and more. Good hands, good route, nice finish. Check him out, see? He's kind of stretch it. Now work yourself back in. Boy, that's nice. Let's see if you get a little face pass at the end. Not the shoulder pad, all pads. First and 10. Ball at the 28 yard line of NC State. Here's Cooklet. Pocket closes in and he's hitting as he, as he threw. Was pick? he going forward? They say, I think he was. They say pick. Yep. NC State comes up with the football. It was the one that jarred it loose. Clayton White jarred it loose, and Clint Johnson, number 91, came up with a loose ball. It's the second turnover of the day for Wake Forest. It couldn't have come at a worse time when they were driving. Man, you talk about threatening. Well, let's take a look at this. Inside, see, Coop, you, you, some guys have that clock going. They feel like he's coming. It wasn't working that time. Clayton White, nice strip, and it's just being at the right place at the right time. Watch the arm. Does it go forward? Yep. No. Oh, you don't think nope, so? No, not at all. He all cocked right. it back, but before he could go forward, it was a strip. First and 10, NC State. Up by four, seven minutes to play. That's Hamrick across the formation. Pass is complete. And it goes to Holt, and he's up over the 35-yard line to the 36. Let's take another look at this play and see if his arm is going forward. Sets up. Yeah, that's a strip. Yeah, going back. We got a live ball. You me? Yeah, I, well, then, well, only a little. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? I mean, you can look at Jim Caldwell. I mean, Jim just played it like, okay, no problem. Let's get back and play good defense. 13 receptions, a career high today. Beats the record he set last year against Florida State. What a day for him. What a day for both of these teams. Blitz is on. Running right through the hole, however, is Robinson, and he'll pick up a couple of hard-fought yards to the 38-yard line. It'll be a gain of two, and it'll bring up third down and three. Tackled by Tehran Carpenter. So that play ruled a fumble that NC State takes over on, and Johnson with a recovery. And they're trying to move the ball out of their own territory at the 31, but more importantly than that, eat up valuable clock time. Bingo. Well, this offense has got to realize that uh, Wake is on a roll offensively, so you better keep the ball. They're off the field and reduce the amount of time they have something to do with. Here is Robinson up over the 40-yard line. He's going to be close to the first down. Tackled on the play by Matt Petz from Windsor, Ontario, and uh, Teron Carpenter. In on the tackle as well, but it's going to be a gain of about two, and it's good for the first down. Actually, yeah. three. I like the tackles for Wake and Robbins and Wilburn, but they've been able to run the ball right at that triangle. And they've done it with a, num a number of different pulls. You watch both of the offensive linemen who've been pulling all day long. A little cloth pull right there, but we'll allow that one to happen on that case. But they've been aggressive in their efforts. To the rushing yards. Ray Robinson with. Close to 150 on the day and two touchdowns. 
First and ten. Barnett to throw. And it's Holt. And Holt dances in the wake secondary and gets to midfield. It's a gain of nine. And that's his 14th reception of the day. Terrific acceleration after the catch. I mean, that's the key. This does not look like a good looking play in the beginning. I thought, well, they'll collapse on this, and all of a sudden he shifts gears and out of there. And ducks the hit. Yeah. Almost lost it at the end. Yeah. Second down and one as Holt takes a rare break on the sidelines. He leads the ACC in receptions with 71 now, counting his 14 of today. Get off! Oh, nice time. Wakes in the neutral zone. They get a free play. And Ray Robinson to the Wake Forest 41 yard line. Penalty coming up here on Wake, probably. Great job by Jamie Barnett. And it might be declined by yeah, the Wolfpack great. because of the On the defense, penalty is declined. First down. So it's a first down for NC State. In the meantime, in Chapel Hill today, it's the Tar Heels of North Carolina picking up their fourth win of the season. They're back to four and four. Arkansas up 31 nothing. That's in the fourth, not final yet. Of course, the Tar Heels with uh, two losses in the ACC. A quick game over Chapel Hill. Yep. And here's the handoff to Butler, the fullback, and he's straight ahead over the 40 yard line of the 40 37 of Wake Forest. And so NC State taking control of the football. They picked up the turnover at the seven minute mark. And keep in mind, folks, that uh, Wake Forest, when they get the ball back, if they get the ball back, only have one timeout. Yeah. They've got to go for pay dirt, but I don't think it'll bother them. I mean, they didn't show by that last <laughs> no. series. There's the timeouts left. Wake had to burn one early in the third. Which always comes back to haunt you. That makes 320, 332 look a little less. Second down and seven. Barnett hands off to Robinson. Robinson. First cut in half there, brought down to have the line of scrimmage. And Brian Ray. Sophomore from Wheaton, Maryland, and on the stop for Wake Forest. You, know, you walk away from this game and you, know, you think about NC State. The balance is impressive. The freshman uh, Robinson, Holt, Barnett, Coleman, a lot of weapons for that man to, to utilize, but it's his defense who uh, they ultimately crown Julian. They come up with a big play. Eighth play of this drive that started about four minutes ago. The NC State 32 yard line. Barnett back to throw. Big rush. He's off. Pass complete to Holt. It's good for the first down. Eight yard line of Wake Forest. A big first down comes with two and a half left. And the crowd here in Raleigh comes to their feet. A sellout homecoming crowd. And they've enjoyed this one. So have we. We hope you have too. Kind of need to see where this young man has gone through this program three years ago. Hit a few tough times, you know, and he was still a playmaker. And look at today. 15 catches. Wow. 179 yards, but no touchdown. Small consolation. Yeah, it is rare for him. Here comes the handoff. Big rush on by Wake, but Robinson breaks tackles and carries people to the 25 yard line. It'll be a gain of three. Kelvin, Mo, uh, Kelvin Jones in on the tackle. Three yards, tackle second and like Moses was there for years. Kelvin? Yeah, he was. And they miss him. They yeah, see him and they miss Dustin Lyman. Uh, imagine those two guys on your defense. Well, it, you know, those, those, as you look at Robinson's numbers on the day, great day for him. The average 7.1. Look at those and the injuries uh, that they. Half today with Morgan Kane and Desmond Clark. I wonder why they're still in the ball game, but they are, at least for the moment. Pass complete to Coleman. Coleman down to 10, 5, touchdown. Boy, that Coleman is. And that's what happens. They give you Holt, more Holt, Holt, and all of a sudden Coleman kills you. And that's his second touchdown of the day. And I'll be willing to bet, Steve Martin, that somewhere downfield, Torrey Holt was there throwing a block. Yep. I mean, he's, if he's on the field, he's involved in the play. 
pass pro. They've been throwing a lot of blitz, blitzes at him. See 81, bottom of your screen. See he turns, to put a little block on, on Austin. Just enough to get him in. Daniel Deskovich for the point after. It's a 10-point NC State lead. And this point after looks kind of big now. And the point is kicked and through. Timeout on the field with a minute 32 left to go. NC State now up by 11. 38-27 at Carter Finn. ACC football was brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. For insurance coverage and financial services that meet your needs, call a Nationwide Insurance agent today and get Nationwide on your side. By Domino's Heat Wave. Just one more way, Domino's is delivering a million smiles a day. By Pepsi, the choice of the ACC. By Amoco, you expect more and you get it. By Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service, when your priority is fast delivery for less. By Dodge, the truck stop of the New South, the new Dodge. And by the new Money Manager account from Nations Bank and Nations Bank Investments. Raise your money to the next power. Welcome back to Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina, where NC State is leading Wake Forest by a score of 38 to 27, with a minute 32 left to go in the fourth quarter. And passing hand getting set to kick it away, and Wake Forest will have their job cut out for them. Down 11, one timeout left, and only 92 ticks left on the clock. Wolfpack now goes in on win number six. Kick a short one. McCoy fields it at the 16. McCoy builds up steam, and Adrian Wilson made a couple of special teams tackle. Gets it out to the 32-yard line where Wake will take it. Our delivery of the game is brought to you by Priority Mail from the United States Postal Service. Well, Jamie Barnett has been delivering the mail all afternoon. This is his second touchdown pass of the day to Chris Coleman. And Coleman takes it in from 25 yards out. And that pushes the score to 10. The kick after will make it 11. The crowd approves and NC State. Now trying to nail this thing down as they're on defense. Wake Forest with the ball at their own 31-yard line. Brian Cooper out of the shotgun. Rushes on. The pass complete. Short screen to Chalmers. Chalmers out on the wing. Chalmers still on his feet to the 48-yard line. That moves the chains. Jason Perry on the tackle. Gain of 15 on the play. Chalmers better protect that football. They're going after it. This is going to be first and ten, and the clock will move again. Again, Wake with only one timeout. Kukla throws, pass complete. Jamie Deese, his tenth of the day, but Marcel put hit. Oh, boy. And that keeps the clock running. Second down, no gain on the play. Now give him a yard. Second down and nine. Under a minute to play here in Raleigh. And the NC State defense just has to hang on for a minute. Kukla. The throw rushes on. And it is incomplete. Ten of his Jamie Deese. Jamie Deese with 49 seconds left. Lloyd Harrison on the play that stops the clock with 49 seconds. Now let's take a look at our Amico players of the game. Obvious choices for both. We go to the wide receiver department for Wake Forest. It's Jamie Deese, 11 reception, 54 yards and a touchdown. And of course, Torrey Holt with a career high 15 catches for NC State. Kuklik is rolling out the pass to his right. The pass is incomplete. And it is intended for John Stone, the redshirt freshman in NC State territory at the 38 yard line. That stops the clock with 44 seconds now. And it brings up a fourth down. John Stone has wheels, 10 2. 100 meter man, and he is a guy who you'd like to see get it vertical. But at this point, they drop everybody back and yep. make you run underneath routes. Still, NC State got a fairly decent pass rush on that time. Last chance for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. They need nine for the first down. The pass complete, and they got it. Pass and Chalmers the gets out of bounds at the 38 yard line of NC State. Move the chains, keep Wake in possession. 40 seconds left to go. They still have that timeout. Michael Kane concerned NC State sidelines. 
this conference you're really never relieved until it's over. Lake Forest, of course, uh, stopped a nine-year scheme of losses to NC State last year by winning dramatically at Winston-Salem. But they may not be in with the same finish this time. First and ten. Cook it back to throw. Looking for the end zone. And it's intercepted. Roy Harrison. He will not bring it out. It will stay in for a touchback. Official said, hey, I'm not taking it that way. Trying to toss it to the official. The official said, oh, no, son. You can down it, run out, and do something. It was intended for William Merritt. And Harrison takes the ACC lead in reception and interceptions with his fifth of the year. He got the catch. Didn't make a decision. Clock is still rolling. He tosses the ball. Fisher. Oh, no. I'm not doing that. That's a live grenade. <laughs> <laughs> and there was an anxious moment there. He said, okay, it's a touchback. Fisher <laughs> <laughs> said, oh, no. I'm not going to bail you out of this one. <laughs> Dick Porti and, and Mike O.K. Mike oh, Dick said. shake his head. It's just youth, coach. It's just youth. And Barnell will go down on the knee and force Wake Forest to possibly take the time. They have one left. They may not elect to take it here. The clock's still rolling. And uh, NC State will have to snap it one more time, probably. Jim Caldwell. Been a tough year for Jim and his staff. They, they had high expectations, and then injuries kind of haunted them. They fell to Air Force on the first day of the season, 42 0, but they have done a good job of coming back. But today it wasn't enough, as this game is over. NC State wins it by a score of 38 to 27 at Carter Finley Stadium. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. NC State, Ray Robinson, Chris Coleman, and Torrey Holt, the stars. Holt with 15 catches on his last day on his home field. NC State prevails 38 to 27. For Doc Walker and Mike Hogwood, I'm Steve Martin reminding you you've been watching Jeff Sports exclusive coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football.